In oh. It has like air conditioning and Wi-Fi in it. Wait, hold up. You didn't say all that stuff. You just said there's like a lock on the door where the uh, bus shuttle comes in and that's it. Like what I was thinking, like, you know, it's like, you know, you the regular bus stop, you have your benches and like, you know, a little box in. And then there's like a door that you would just lock. I, you didn't say anything about, you know, being air conditioning, okay. you know, Wi-Fi and all that stuff. Oh, wait, I just, said that I just, I just thought it was like, you know, a regular bus stop that would, no, with just a door on it. And a lock, which uh, again, I don't see what's the point. The, like, you know, I mean, you know, you're in college, you're pretty the, much a dough. You do, I mean, I know some people don't go good on their judgments, but like, you know, just, just deal with it. I mean, if, if people come up to you like, hey, you want some, uh, some, uh, some drugs? Like, just say yes or no. Like, it's easy. You can take it or you don't take it. I mean, this means nothing. Okay. <laughs> but to answer your question, Meg, um, <laughs> I don't think there is anything like that here. I mean, I, the only thing I can really think of is that um, Bryan College uh, University that's uh, here in Texas, um, or Texas A&M, as it's uh, more frequently called, um, College State, uh, Bryan College Station, I think, may have something like that. But as for, you know, any, anything locally, um, I've never seen that. And I mean, I even, I've gone to the local college here, Central Texas College, and I've, uh, you know, I've gone past uh, some of the high schools and the junior and the junior high schools and everything that's uh, in the city, that's in the cities near me and never seen so, anything like that. And also, like, the closest college to me was a private college is USC. And it's in an it's in an area where like there's prostitutes everywhere. Like well not everywhere, but like you like in the morning you would always see like at least two or three prostitutes just walking down the, the street. And then and well, it, was, it was even more <laughs> what? No, shut up. What's even worse? <laughs> <laughs> what's even worse? Like there's like um by the college and also my school, my my high school was like right down the street from USC. So every day I would have to see like you know prostitutes walking around everywhere so anyways like what's even worse there's like down the street a little bit further away from the uh the main college where there's like you know, they got the main college then there's like the uh, all the high end uh stuff and like where the downtown there is so like the the science museum the the art museum the natural history museum all that stuff there's like a little it's like a little uh like elementary school and then there's like a uh, prostitute just walking right where the elementary school is so i'm like what the hell you know they gotta make a different route like you know you know like in the streets some streets got like uh bike routes i think you know some areas you make like a, a prostitute route you know just have a their own walkway in some areas yes <laughs> i actually know a, a prostitute i don't remember what she went by when she was on the street but now she's like this really old church lady Oh, and she, like, <laughs> she done she done saw jesus. <laughs> she done saw jesus and he probably done came so yes yeah, so that is uh speaking of uh oh yeah anyways yes. you meet a lot of weird people if you work at a convenience store oh well yeah oh you, 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 you meet a lot of weird people uh you meet a lot of weird people uh just living in la you know just are you kidding me? People, um, has has any are... of y'all ever? Let me let me ask you this: Has, has any of y'all any of y'all worked at like a uh, over the phone customer service uh, place or anything? Oh, I would no, never work at a uh, customer service. I just have no. Oh, you... I just want to care about people' problems at all. Like, I'll just send them yeah. to the uh, the other person. You you will talk to some of the most interesting people. Like I remember this one time um, where I actually where I was on the phone for probably about thirty minutes, um, and the guy I was speaking to was a huge conspiracy theorist. Oh, and that's, that's the best. That's oh my the best God. people that I like to talk to. I just sort of bait them into saying more inane nonsense and shit. And I, yeah, well, was like, I really was like, yeah, man, the fucking, the banks, they, they stole and burned all the money. Yeah, keep on telling me about this. Conspiracy I was like, I, all I was trying to. And 
Yes, all the other stuff. And it was like throughout like John thirty Wilson. the thirty minutes. <laughs> and that, it was like throughout the thirty minutes. <laughs> yes, and that John Wilkes is a uh, reptilian. Do you remember, remember that? Uh, people, oh. people say uh, the, uh, reptilian. Oh, what was the guy? Name? I forgot the guy's name. He's like on fucking YouTube. He got like a book. He's like, have you ever seen this video? I forgot his name. But like the guy who made the book about the whole reptilian race of books. And he really like legitimately believe that there's like a, a whole reptilian. And to be honest with you, in a scientific evolutionary perspective, there could have been some reptilian humanoid race or uh, some, sort of, some sort of like a lizard that's uh have like a sort of higher being of uh, upbringing. But if that did exist, it was it's long dead ago. It's, it's long dead. There's no... Well, not necessarily. Yeah. Anyway, um, if there was a reptilian, if, if there was like any sort of reptilian-ish species, more likely it's on another planet in yeah. another star system hundreds of your light years head, away. Because not only that, they could shapeshift. Yeah. They could shapeshift. Last, this dude's like, yeah, like, I forgot to say, he's like, he's he saw someone who was talking to him, who believed themselves of being a uh, reptilian and like they could shape shift. So it was it was very weird and funny. And also, there's like other people who does the same thing. Like just t- and uh, and one thing about these people who do like this conspiracy theory because there I, I mean there actually are like real conspiracy theories like the uh like the uh, red flag. I forgot what's called like red flag something. It's basically just about uh, you know uh, when certain countries want to declare war on other countries. Oh no, it's false flag shit i forgot it's, it's basically it's called like false flag something it's basically like when certain countries want to like declare war on another one they'll have like um like a sort of like domestic sort of terrorism in their own country and just blame that on like another country that's more viable and like reasonable to think of other than a fucking humanoid reptilian that can shapeshift into michael jackson that's totally different but yeah, <laughs> another thing like when you ask those people about like their conspiracy, they never truly give you an answer. They just keep on talking more and more about shit that you didn't ask for. So yep. And speaking of shit that we didn't ask for, welcome back to another side quest podcast. I got today me, your host Zell, and with me today I got Maggie, aka Wolf of Riders, and. You know what? I actually never asked your name, Crimson. I I think I never really asked your name, Brian. Oh, I think I think I've actually told told you once. Uh, well, you <laughs> if, know what? If, if, if I, I haven't kills. told you, if I haven't told you, you probably somebody would have heard it on any of my videos uh, whenever I'm on Teamspeak. Uh, no. Well, you know what? You and Velch have the same name, so I think I've probably said Brian once when we were playing regularly. You know, probably thought he was referring to you. So yeah. <laughs> Is your, Probably. Yeah. Is your name spelled differently? Like, I know, like, is it, is it with a Y or an I? Because I know a lot of people... Y. Okay, okay, so you're... Well, shit. Oh, yeah, Brian. Well, Velsh Brian. He is with the I, yours with the Y. Okay. So you are by... Wait. Bri, but what? By, what? <laughs> I was trying to say, Where? like, uh, Rye, like, with the Y. Whatever. <sighs> it doesn't matter. I Brian think with you guys confuse so, yourself. <laughs> no. Brian with a Y. So yes, uh, the topic for today is basically just, um, just, I mean, really, I had like some other topics. Normally I do like about with three topics. You know, something within like, you know, anime, music, or gaming, and then another one, something weird like an uh, all-time classic, gluten-free singles. Check out glutenfreesingles.com. Uh, yes. As a real website. Oh god, we're not <laughs> going back to that. Those <laughs> dating you, websites, are we? If you are looking for a gluten-free lifestyle, just oh. check out www.glutenfreesingles.com. You can find all your gluten-free people. And note, they are, they they do not check a uh, criminal record. So if you are indeed a serial killer, you you've got a good chance there. You even need a gluten-free dating website anyway. 
Like, do you want me to As sing? the same? Do you want me to sing? I can understand it? having a Jewish like, dating website, but not a gluten free. Oh, there is, there is a gluten free website. There is a actual uh, Doctor Who gluten. I, mean, I was going to say I was going to say Doctor Who gluten free, but there's actually there's a Doctor Who dating website. Uh, oh, I did find out a Renaissance uh, dating website. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I did find that out. Um, of course, there's that. Yes, of course the furry. There's, yeah, there's a. F- and then, and then of course, there's the Disney dating website. Yeah, that, that's where it all started from. The when I found out about the Disney dating website, that's where it all just then, just crumbled down. And then Crimson over here wanted to get really super weird and looking for a hentai websites. I'm like, what are you looking? For? I you didn't. Doing? Hey, Yo, hey, man, if I could think, up, if I could think of one, hey, if I could think of it. Bet, uh, bet you a dollar to donuts, like 30 or 40, 50 other people probably thought of the same thing. But I wasn't actively looking for it. I was looking for some weird stuff. You went to, like... That's other, weird. Like, yeah, but you went to the other direction. You went, like, straight up I go in stuff. all directions. You went to... Oh. I, he, he goes all I go in all directions. I think outside the box. Directions. He goes... I'm willing to bet there's a cousin dating website powered by eHarmony at Ancestry.com. I do not doubt it. Drum boom. I'm trying to do like a drum. You know what? I actually do have like a drum loop on the audio program that I have. So whatever. It takes two. It takes like five seconds. And that five seconds, I don't want to do that. But anyways, uh, yeah. What's the topic? Oh, yeah. Basically, um, just anime games. Well, Video games that's based off of anime and why the majority of them are terrible and vice versa. And also, don't want to brag, but I just got Evangelion 3.33 in the mail yesterday. Did I say yesterday's or yesterday? I've you say yesterday's. Yeah, you know, you know what? Um, oh, yeah, I actually did post up my uh, old college uh, radio show called In the Cut with DJ Radu and Finesa Vandy. And the week after that, that's when we started to do like Mother Friend Chain. He, he called himself Tabasco because he's half white and Mexican and he keeps things spicy. So yeah, like I noticed the, the more and more I edited those videos, I, fi- I found out that I was basically the Carl Pilkington of that radio show. Because uh, I did actually equate my show to like uh, the Ricky Gervais XFM show where it was better than that, but it was still kind of bad. But oh, uh, but again, it was still fun to do though. And I was just up back then. I was like just up my own ass, especially on the first video. Like um, I, 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 re- I listened to what I was saying. I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about, man? You sound dumb as shit." But you know, I. I <laughs> I kind of had to do it because, you know, you're on the radio, you got to, like, make some sort of, like, persona for yourself, and you can't have dead oh, hair. Of course. Yeah. Although there was, you know what, I don't want to insult the guy, but I will insult the guy. One guy, which was, like, our friend back then, but he, since, did not become friends because one of our other friends did not want to go out with him. He was like, oh, shit, I can't be friends with nobody. So he left. So he was, I don't want to be, I don't want to insult him, but I will insult him. He's a little bitch. And he kind of messed up one of my shows. Although I was a little bit glad that it did not get recorded. So, yeah. He just kept, like, asking just dumb questions where, like, where you're not supposed to. He kept asking, like, um... Rhetorical questions. And, you know, when you're on the air, you can't ask rhetorical questions because, like, it's just going to be dead air. Like, you know, it's just, it's just dead air or, like, dumb questions where it's really uncomfortable. Cause, like, one thing he was asking about, like, would I go out with... Okay, one of the co-hosts, Sebastian, he has, like, three sisters, one of them younger. He's like, oh, would you go out with his younger sister? I'm like, why would you say this shit on air? Like, you know, I'm just, I'm either not going to say nothing or I'm just going to have to ask, actually answer, which was no. But thinking about it, a little bit of yes afterwards, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, she yeah. has red hair, so like, I, I like girls with red hair, so. Uh, and she's uh, half Mexican, so yeah, that was, so that was a little up there. 
And it was 2010. Back then, I was only uh, 18. You know, not 24 now. Oh, yeah, my birthday was two days ago, as of now. So I am now 24. Happy so birthday. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. birthday. I'm probably the oldest out of all y'all. So, yeah. Um, 24. Oh. I'm 20. Well, I was born in a well, month wide, whatever, anyways. So let's hey, see. What, hey, what year were you born? Uh, 92, yeah. Well, you I was born in 91. Oh. Well, what do you do? <laughs> I, I just shut you up right there. <laughs> Whoop dee dee. Well then, well then, I, old man. I'm the youngest. Well Yay. Old man. How, How does it feel to be the youngest? It when feels do, pretty uh, darn great, but I am the youngest out of my siblings, so. Hey, you know what? Be proud of being the youngest because you know what that means? That means you get to live longer than every one of us. Yeah, I'm That's actually, sad. Uh, well, he's trying to. I'm actually also younger than on my. Uh, I have two other brothers. One actually did uh, pass away. They're like in their thirties. So growing up, I actually did like think like, yeah, I would definitely live longer than both of them, just statistically speaking, because <laughs> you know they're like fifteen and sixteen years older than me. So just statistically speaking, I was like, that yeah, would I'm for my siblings. So I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely would live longer. You what? Than them. I've <laughs> outlived four of my siblings. It, Oh, and, I'm there you so oh. and I have three living siblings right now, and I like him. Except my oldest like brother. He's kind of a jerk. You like him. But his wife's yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, at least got, his wife's nice. Yeah. I got siblings. Pretty much the only like English it. she knows is, I make pie? You want pie? <laughs> what I country love me some pie. From? Where to stand? What country is she from? Um, nationality. I think so. Colombia. Oh, Colombia. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. All right, yo. Let's get back again into the uh, topic. Yeah. Yeah, because we're going at what the anime, uh, anime games and whatnot. Yeah. No, let's start with the games that are like actually kind of good and goes in with the source material because there's like just a ton that just have a lot of source material to work with, but. It just seems to just throw that all out the way. And also, sometimes the game mechanics are just all out the way. So I'm going to start with one, which was what I was actually like, uh, playing last night until, like, for about five hours, the uh, Naruto Shippuden, one of them, uh, Ultimate Ninja Storm. It's also, they got, like, Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 coming out, which I think in February, the... I don't know what date, but yeah. it says February. Is in pre order for like Steam and yeah, well, games like well, 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 you know, let's go with some of those good games. I mean, I've played Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm three full bursts, and it's a good game. So they got they use a lot of the source material there. Yeah, by source material, and, it's just the anime, you know, go by the uh, the manga. Yeah. Yeah. And other games that I play, like some of the, and I mean, I know there's a lot of Dragon Ball games that you know use a lot of the source material and everything. Although I have to say, um, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, it's good. The mechanics are all right. There are some things though that I, that I that, that I have a little bit issues with with Xenoverse. What the and about? one of I actually thought that hmm. the uh, Xenoverse was going to be like how the old. First of all, Ultimate Tenkaichi is not ultimate. It is far beyond from ultimate it is like less than it's just the opposite of ultimate ultimate tinkaichi they should just just if you got a copy of that just throw that in the trash can just burn it put it where like uh i don't know i know that cds they can't they're not like a bio disposable but if you can do something to make cds bio disposable just do that and it's it's completely garbage just go ahead and buy tinkaichi 3 or Xenoverse. Xenoverse, I gotta say, like, I, I mean, you got your problems with Xenoverse, but, like, I, I also have, like, some issues with Xenoverse, too, but I think that Xenoverse is, like, the new Tenkaichi. Like, it's not, like, I'm gonna say, like, it's it's not all that great, the first one, but I'm pretty sure once we, like, the second or third one, it would definitely wrap up into, um, what it could be. Because there's, like, potential to it, but it's a little, a little bit off. 
Well, it's like, okay, you know, here's kind of my little issues, uh, you know, with Xenoverse, you know. I like to see, you know, I, I you know, I will say I like the storyline. I like what they've done with, like, the parallel quests and everything. But, you know, granted, the parallel quests, you can either, A, do online um, co-op with other people, or do, or if you're in the single-player lobby, uh, you can, like, I know, I, th I believe you can, like, take uh, other people's um characters as like an npc and you know co-op through that or s some way but it's like the main storyline i would have expected you know a little bit of of a cooperative um uh twist into it because it felt like there was a there, there was a little bit of stuff that they could have done to add in co-op in the main storyline but i think my biggest issue with xenoverse is when if you have a Saiyan character and you're and you have either the Super Saiyan or the Super Saiyan Two um, transformation abilities, I mean, if you've seen Dragon Ball, you know that when a Saiyan goes into that Super Saiyan mode, no matter if it's one, two, three, or four, uh, or three, not gonna go with four because four doesn't do this, and. One and two, the uh, people, uh, everybody's hair is pretty much, you know, stand up and everything. I mean, look at uh, Trunks. You know, Trunks' hair is a little bit more similar. It is a little bit like a normal human's hair or basically like Bulma's. But yet when he goes into Super Saiyan, it stands up. Yeah, that's the, the same you know, thing. Yeah, I would have expected, you know, with, uh, with Super Saiyans to have a little bit more of, um, you know, whenever they go into a, uh, when, when, like, whenever a custom character goes into Super Saiyan, I would have expected a little bit more in the hair. And ultimately, and ultimately, the one thing I'm also a little bit disappointed about is in Xenoverse uh, for a Saiyan, the furthest up you can go is uh, Super Saiyan 2. You're not able to get to uh, Super Saiyan 3 or anything past that. And it's I like, would... I know. Sorry. I was going to say, like, what about... Uh, nah, I know that there's a DLC for it since the Battle of... Uh, since the Battle of Gods came out. And I think they're doing... A, oh, yeah, they actually did, like, the Battle of Gods DLC and the Revival of F. So there's no new DLC for that or it's just stay the same. And also, like, if I, there's gonna be any other deals, sorry. Yeah. Also, I didn't play a uh, saying I went straight up Frieza race because Frieza is amazing. So yeah, I mean, yeah, my well, exactly like right, cooler. <laughs> well, with the uh, Xenoverse on the DLCs, I mean, if you have the uh, season pass to get all the DLCs, um, I mean, other than the Resurrection of F, where you uh, let me actually pull up the uh, that because like. One of the things I got in, uh, or that one of the things that you're able that you got in with uh, Resurrection F is um, in the Resurrection F pack you got uh, you got in um, two sets of clothing for free. One of them was the we uh, what was the, um, the it was Wii one of the uh, they were both outfits. One of the outfits was what Goku had worn when he when he and Vegeta fought uh, Golden Frieza. And then, of course, you had Vegeta's Grace um, Saiyan armor. So you got in those, and then and then the other thing you got in was basically the blue Super Saiyan wig, and it was um, the pure Super Saiyan God blue wig, and that was it. I mean, granted, you you are able um, if you go through like the parallel quests and such, you can get a lot of the um, different abilities and such that Goku and um, Vegeta had during Resurrection F. And, you know, come to think of it, some of the stuff, I, I haven't, um, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, but I'm not sure they had this in the movie, but uh, uh, some of the abilities that they had was like, um, what was it? One of the abilities that Vegeta, the Vegeta, uh, that was a Vegeta ability was uh, the Super Gallic Gun as like an ultimate attack, and then the other, and then another one was um, called a Warp uh, Kamehameha, where basically it was basically um, something that came out during that was uh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, that did came out of Z. 
and like and like yeah, it was one, Dragon Ball Z yeah, during and one, yeah Z in like one episode of GT that when when that came out. Yeah, it was the the one I can remember from Z was it was basically the episode where Goku was fighting Perfect Cell. And he was uh, doing a Kamehameha, but before he released it, he did an instant transmission that put him, like, point blank at the cell and fired it straight up into him. Yeah, I think that was in, uh, also in uh, Budokai 3 and uh, one of the Takaishi games. But also, but the only thing, really the only thing I have a problem with the universe is more, like, mechanic-wise of Aztec. Like, one reason is... One is the RNG. There's just way too much RNG in the game. It's, it's so much RNG into it where I just like sort of did not want to play anymore because there's items you have to collect. And we go I, we go to the quest. There's like a little item list where you, where you it would show like a item list that you can get. And if you complete and it really like no matter how uh, well you complete each mission, there's still like just... A random chance you would get that uh, said item that's in the list at all. Like I've gotten like oh, yeah. Z ranking in like most of the missions, and like I still would not get the one particular uh, item that I would have to need to advance in one part of the story. So that's so that's where like I kind of didn't like where Zeniverse was. It's way too much RNG. One, the uh, we we use like the. The key blast move, like the special key blast move, like Command Man and Galaga and all that, it just felt really wonky. It didn't feel fluid as is back when uh, the Tenkaichi uh, came out. It just felt like sort of forced and you couldn't really stop mid uh, section. I'm actually like doing the actual Command Man hand motion as I'm talking this, like you can actually see me, but anyways. Like, yeah, it just felt like really yeah. wonky. And also, there's no like, um, like again, like in past DBC games, there's no like a we you like there's no key blast struggle. That was like a real major part of like all the DBC games, especially in the uh, the shows where you see like you know all the key blast struggles of like Goku and Vegeta doing their command man got a gun key blast struggle. There's yeah. none of the, there's none of that in the game. And also there's no the like, only- um destruction. There's no destructible areas. That was that was that's what made like Tenkai yeah. issue really good. And there's just well, like the um the stages. Well, get when it comes to destructible areas, that really depends because like yeah, but um, also when they in did their certain areas, but also when they did their like ultimate blast, it's like a it cuts to like the overview of the Earth, and then they'll have like a giant energy blast, and then cuts back to the uh, the arena, and it's just destroyed. But in Xenoverse, they do their ultimate attack, and like it's just they just do it. It, it felt more like a game instead of just the, the show. Whereas, like, other games, it, it did feel like a game, but it felt more like you're, like, of what the show actually did, or the, anime, or the manga. Instead of just being, you know... I guess it could be true, but it's like, when it comes to destructible game. areas, it's like, um, there's, it's like, there are some areas where it's like, certain things were destructible, but not everything... It's kind of like if you're playing, like, well, one good example would be kind of like uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, and, like, Grand Theft Auto Five. I mean, you could go around, you can run your vehicle into a lamppost, take it out and everything, but if you try to run your vehicle into, like, a tree, then you're pretty much going to be stopped dead. Every uh, There were certain things where it was destructible, but at the same time, not everything was destructible. Yeah, but we're talking DBZ. Everything gets destroyed. Like, the planet is there. Yeah, like... yeah and, and DBZ, in Dragon Ball... Well, actually, in any Dragon Ball, everything got destroyed. Yeah. What do you uh, think of? Because uh, you've been awfully quiet. Yeah. Okay. I'm fiddling with my necklace. Oh, you're still... You're fiddling uh, with the necklace? Taking out the... Uh, of the box and whatnot. Well, I've gone out of the box and I'm putting the different charms out on it. Out of the box. Out of the box. No, nobody listening here. That, that, is... that, that was an old, <laughs> yes, old, that was show. An old show. And Gullah God, Gullah feels... Island. What was it like? What's another one? It was like Gullah Gullah Island, out of the box, Blue Slews. And it was like, some, it was like something else. I remember it. Oh, God. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you ever watch HR Puff and stuff? Uh, no, that was Wait, like way watch. too. I was way too old for that, so no. Although I did hey, watch hey. Caillou, that was I did watch Caillou, and I was like, yeah, I watched Caillou. Yeah, Puff and stuff should have been yeah. around when you were a kid because that's been around since the sixties. What Puff and stuff? Yeah. HR Puff yeah, stuff. I, I I think I remember seeing it. it. It was a long time ago, but I think I remember seeing it. Nah, never watched that. I was I remember like, if I remember. remember- if I if I remember Theodore Tugboat and Thomas the Tank Engine, I, I then I'm pretty sure I probably saw Puff and stuff. Actually, yeah, I did. It was a long. It was I was really little then. <laughs> I love to know my dad because every time he says makeup, I pretend to be witchy poo and I go makeup, <laughs> makeup. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Unless you're talking about Blue's Clues, then yeah, that's, that's something else. Oh yeah, remember that uh, rumor when the uh, when people said that the uh, the guy from Blue's Clues died? Yeah, that was a that was a really Ooh. strange rumor. Yeah, the guy from Blue's Clues. There was there was a rumor that that. Oh, uh, the original died. like Steve yeah. or something. Yeah. Isn't he still alive? Yeah, of course. He is. Yeah, the, the he rumor, is. He. Yeah, there was a rumor that he had died, but really he was he played like a. A, he had like a small role in uh, one of the uh, Law and Order episodes, and he, where he played a drug addict and he died in it. So that's where the rumor came up. But also, yeah. the new guy, which for some reason when I saw him, I knew there was something sneaky bullshit about him. He actually did get fired from the show because apparently he uh, touched up to kids, which he looked like the kind of dude that would do some shit like that. He was he kind of like that. He had that look on his face. That like yeah, it's a little challenge like, and also he was not consistently wearing a green shirt. He wore like green, orange. I'm like yo, listen, Steve wore green all the time. I don't care if your name's Bill. You wear green all the time. So yeah, yeah, but like if I remember correctly, like if- uh, the original Steve he quit because uh, he was growing bald and. Yeah. He was growing so, up. and oh, it was yeah he yeah he went uh the original yeah. Steve um, looked like he was growing ball for me so right. well maybe he probably did, but I just he, never know I never really looked at his hair that much so maybe yeah he he was grown bald and he felt like that and if I remember correctly he felt like that it kind of messed up the character or something or so or for some reason that he didn't want to. Uh, go around having kids, you know, see him the way he was. So he quit the show, and then they got whoever, um, whoever the next person was. Yeah, he, he did look sort of molestery, like to be honest with you, which he actually did apparently. And also, uh, no, if Steve was going, if the original guy was playing Steve was going ball, he could just play like the new uh, Mister Rogers. I mean, there was, I mean, I think the kids, I, you know, I think. Kids today, like they need, they need like a new Mister Rogers and definitely a new Bill Nye the Science Guy. There's a lot of kids who are just straight up stupid. I mean, if it wasn't for Bill Nye the Science Guy, I probably, well, I definitely would not be making videos for YouTube, and I would not be into science. I just would probably be some guy doing some job that I probably want to like. So yeah, so just big thanks to Bill Nye the Science Guy wherever he is. Whether he's listening or not, I think he's most likely alive. Not. Yeah, I know he's still alive. Yes, I know he's still alive. I'm saying like wherever he is on this. I actually Earth. met him this past October. Oh really? Yeah, and I couldn't think of what to say, and boo, so when he was boo, like, "How boo, do you like the boo, meet?" Boo, boo, boo. He was like, just, just, "How do you like the meet and greet?" And I was just like, "Mm-hmm," and then I just walked straight to the buffet. <laughs> Starstruck. And I ate a lot of shrimp that was just, wrapped in bacon. Just starstruck. <laughs> she saw she saw her childhood right in front of her eyes. Like, okay, I cannot talk to this man. But yeah, if I saw Bill Nye, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. Was he wearing a bow tie? Because he always wears a bow tie. Yeah. Yes. He was. I mean, it's, it's like Mr. Rogers not wearing a sweater. It's, there's some things you gotta do. Well, it's just like as the doctor, or yeah, the eleventh doctor has said before, bow ties are cool. 
Okay. For, the, for those who watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Which? I watch Doctor Who. I've watched it since I was like 16. Oh, very nice. And wow. I remember I was really happy um, when Amy and Wally got married because that episode aired on my birthday. Oh, really? And I was like, it's a birthday present for me. Yeah, like, I saw, like, the first season of the new Doctor Who. I don't really like it too much, mainly because, for me, like, I don't know if this sounds like ignorant or anything, like, just, he just, the guy who played the original, I'm not, well, like, the first new Doctor Who, he didn't seem all too British enough for me, so, like, yeah, I was just gonna skip on this mm. one. I and forgot he, the I, guy. I think the first guy really was actually not. Australian or something like that. So, I don't know. Christopher Eccleston? Christopher Elkison, yeah. I have no idea. And I'm talking about the first new Doctor Who, not the first very, very first one from like the the sixties. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. Christopher Elkison is was the it was um the new Doctor. Um well, it was the first new Doctor. I forgot what the fir- what the actual first first doctor doctor name was. William Hartnell, I think. Yeah. The only person, the only person I really remember was, I think it's like the fourth do- uh, Doctor, Tom Baker. Oh, I loved to Tom Tom Baker. T- Tom Baker was one of the best Doctors during the old series. Well, I have no idea. I the third one the best. Yeah, I mean, I That's didn't so see fun. like, uh, like. The first episode of the second season of the new one, I didn't really get into it. I was watching it all on Netflix, so like, yeah, I'll just I'll just stick to uh, Sherlock Holmes. Wait till uh, the dude, yeah, like pretty much the guy from Sherlock Holmes. Not the not the BBC Sherlock Holmes, the uh, the elementary one that's on uh, on NBC. Which oh yeah, yeah. Have you not seen the the one the old one from BBC? Oh yeah, but I don't I don't like it. I like. Elementary is a lot better because it got a uh, doctor. It got I me. Mean, I won't just say it got the uh, the guy playing Sherlock who was like more modernized and relatable, and you know a new Watson, and then you know sort of like really super Britishy Benedict Cumberbatch playing uh, Sherlock. <laughs> I don't know. I, I me personally, I liked the. Uh... The uh, the original BBC uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> well, we, uh, although we'll, that's where we do. although I will say um, the uh, the person that played as uh, damn it, I forgot his name. He's a guy that be, he's he's a guy who plays as yeah, Tony Hawkeye, Stark yeah. in. You mean Hawkeye. he's the guy who plays not not, not Tony Stark because that's Robert Downey Jr. He, he was in Hawkeye, yeah. He was he played Hawkeye, yes, I know. And he was also yeah, in, Robert uh, Downey Jr. He he plays Sherlock Holmes. In, oh yeah, uh, oh, you're movies. talking about the movie Sherlock Holmes. I'm thinking like the BBC TV show Sherlock Holmes. Okay, yes, you were you are correct, and I was semi wrong. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Get real weird. Gluten free. Yeah, just re- singles. <laughs> yeah, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say I'm thinking back a little bit towards some of the um, like some is like some of the anime games and whatnot, and it's like I don't know, I'm looking at like some of the like some um, I'm trying to think. I'm looking at some games that were ba- that were based on shows, and like one game that came to mind, that I just thought, let me find it. Uh, here it is: Hyperdimension Neptunia. No, that was that. The a, anime was good. No, that was a game first, then on the anime. Yeah, like, game first. Yeah, first it started as a game, then went to anime. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I think. Like most animes that are based on games are better than like games that are based on anime because there's like that hyper dimension uh neptunian whatever and then there's another one which is a really good anime that i really do like and also like i actually did want to do like a top 10 uh anime opening theme songs and one of the animes which is also based off of video games show by rock i think 
it's I think Show by Rock is the same name as the game, but basically the game is like you know just a cell phone rhythm game. It's basic, you know. It's it's only in Japan, so it's like a cell phone rhythm based game, and the animes are really good, and the music, the opening credits, and the opening theme song was really good, mainly because you know it's based off a of music game. And what I did think about the um, well, first of all, let me let me just go ahead and do my whole top ten anime opening theme songs, even though I don't have all 10, because, like, I wanted to do the top 10, but a lot of, a lot of stuff came up at the time, so basically, number, what I had for number 10 was Mikagura, Mikagura High School Suite, but it has, like, a really good opening theme song, you know, it's catchy and all that, that's why it's, it's, it's not all that much exciting, but it is catchy, so that's why it's only at number 10, and the anime is pretty cool, it's by, like, this girl who goes, like, this super elite mm-hmm. high school of like kids who have like special powers and they battle from some well they, they battle but like not for like to save the world or anything they just battle for like for fun and whatnot so this is a pretty good uh anime and then i think i had either number eight or seven to be the opening of the first season of assassination classroom which Again, if you have not seen Assassination Classroom, that you you gotta watch that. It's it's sort of like Battle Royale, but reverse. Instead of the kids trying to kill each other, it's you know the kids have to kill the teacher, which the teacher is actually like a sort of genetically octopus type creature made by the government, and it's trying to destroy the world. And so, and and, and also it becomes a teacher because you know. They made it made a bet with the government saying that it has one full school year, which is in Japanese school years. So they see their school year starts in like I think October to no wait. Well, their their school year ends in March, and they and it's is so basically they have like one school year to like try to assassinate the teacher before he destroy the world because he already like destroy half the moon so like okay after the moon i'm gonna destroy the world but i'm gonna have like one year one yeah. school year until everybody in the class sort of try to kill me and also what's pretty good like the anime it actually looks exactly like um battle royale in the sort of well not anime like it looks sort of like it it, it feels like battle royale is the, the fact that um the students are all like outcasts and then they're in like a shack that looks like the um, stuff from Battle Royale. So yeah, the Assassin's Creed Classroom opening OP was either well, it was gonna be like okay. number seven or eight. It's a it's a really good anime. It's a really good um, theme song, and yeah, like I just do like the last three because I didn't really think of the other one. So number three was gonna be was the Show by Rock anime op- opening, which is again it was. Original song, I forgot who it was by, but yes, and that's another like really good happy go lucky anime song. And the show is is I mean it's it's your generals like oh shit there's there's a dog. Yes, if you hear the dog in the background, just <laughs> the dogs completely ignore it. Oh, don't worry, I was doing the uh, Dungeons and Dragons game. Let's see on Thursday, yes. and one of the people that we had on Skype, uh, <laughs> their dogs were just. Going crazy for no apparent reason. Yeah, so like Show by Rock was number three. Number two, where did I have? Right, number two was the opening of Ninja Slayer. Oh my god, was, she must see like somebody across the street because she only does this shit where like people walk by. But anyways, I was like number two was Ninja Slayer opening, which again was actually a song that most people well. Maybe some people know, but it's a, it's a band called Boom Boom Satellites. They were like really popular in the '90s, you know. And uh, yeah, they did like more like uh, it felt like their music was so like cross between Daft Punk and like more of like sort of alternative rock. But yeah, like Boom Boom Satellites, who did um, Back to Black, was the opening theme song for Ninja Slayer. That's like a really great song. If you have not heard the song, just go to this go to YouTube, Boom Boom Satellites, Back to Black, and I'm pretty sure most people will be like, oh hey, Ninja Slayer sent me here or some shit like that. And also the anime. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the anime later, because a lot of people 
did not like the anime, but I don't want to say they're stupid or don't understand, but you know, they're people who did not like it, you know, they're a little bit stupid and didn't understand satire. But yeah, the number one spot was, I'm pretty sure it's anime that you like, Crimson, and I'm pretty sure you know it already. So, you do you Which know one? it? Uh, you, you were talking about it quite a lot. Uh, what, like, Dragon Ball or Naruto? Uh, no. It's us. Uh, it's Sarah for the end. That that's the number. That was the number one anime ah. opening. Yeah, that was the number one anime opening theme song that I had for 2015. So yeah, like. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, like if you have not heard the uh, opening theme song for Sarah for the end, just you know YouTube it, and then if you like the theme song, you would definitely probably like the uh, anime. So yeah, that was my sort of top 10 but i could not complete it because stuff happened <laughs> anyways let's go back into the topic at hand yes you were talking about what the neptunian hyperspace dimension hyper dimension console board xbox versus ps4 versus the wii and whatever sega wants to make after 20 years. Yeah, that, uh, that, uh, that game was pretty good. I mean, it's an anime game. Yeah, and the only reason why I mention this is because it's an anime game. Because, let's, fa- uh, let's face it, I bet you somewhere before the game came out, there might, I, I almost wonder if a manga came out before it. Probably Not did. Usually. Not usually that sort of stuff. I wouldn't doubt it. Don't come out. I mean, well, manga, I'm they thinking they probably come out later. Because I know there's... A manga for Kill I Kill, but that's terrible. But the manga for Kill I Kill is just terrible. And Kill I Kill is the actual, the anime for that is the actual source material. So the manga being shit and terrible, just know that the anime of Kill I Kill is way better. Because that's the actual source material. And which is, uh, yeah. what's sort of the problem with some of these games? Well, they have like all these source material but they just don't use it they either want to like create a new story but it just doesn't feel right because either the story doesn't feel right or like i've said before like in xenoverse the game mechanics doesn't feel that doesn't feel that well true although we'll say there is one there is one anime that i know of that uh I, I mean, I've seen the anime before, but none of but it, it didn't have really many games, so I can't really say much about them. That was Slayers. I mean, it, Slayers had like, let's see, let me pull it up. Slayers had like quite a few, like only a few games. Like there were Slayers Royal, Slayers Royal Two, and then like Slayers and then Slayers Wonderful. I mean. The, I haven't really seen any of the games, but that was. Uh, but then again, those games were all in uh, Japan. But like, uh, but it's like there's a lot of it. But it's like I've been looking around. It's like there's a uh, quite a few ve- uh, veil games are exclusive to uh, Japan that we don't even have here in the U.S. It's like, uh, what's another anime that I can think of? Um, Zoids. You know, down here in the U.S., you know, yeah, we got, like, Zoids Legends. Uh, what is it? There's an Xbox. I know it's like a 360 Zoids Xbox game. Let me pull it up. That wasn't really anything. That didn't really have anything to do with the uh, the anime, which I was kind of sad about. Yeah, there's other ones like the um, Sword Art Online anime. You know what? There's things about like games that are based off of animes that are based on MMOs. For the most part, they are just terrible. Cause like um, Sword Art Online, the game is really like. First of all, like if you want to make a game off of Sword Art, Sword Art Online, I think it'd be better to instead of making it like the anime, instead of just make it like the MMO inside of the anime. Cause I think it'd be a lot better to actually have like a real Sword Art Online game is that's not the anime, but the actual MMO that's based around it. I think that would be actually way better than just you no know, following Kirito around just doing just inane nonsense. 
It was like, let's see, the the closest game from like the uh, Zoids I know of that is close to the anime was like uh, Battle Legends and games like Battle Legends that was exclusive to um, to Japan. And like, when I think about the games, a game like Zoids Assault, uh, which is a game on the Xbox 360, that game was more of a Actually, yeah, they, they got, that game is actually a, a real-time strategy game. And, and, like, I don't know, there's a lot of the anime that I wish was in some of the games. I will say, though, when it, when it comes to a game like uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse, you know, the ability to make your own character and, you know, have, have that character do, uh, you know use power, use abilities that other characters from the actual canon had used before. I, I would not mind if there was a Naruto game like that, because like, I mean, think about it. If you had the ability to like make a, uh, if you had a game where you can make a Naruto character, and you know whether you start out in the Leaf Village or not. And yeah, you and you know, you can either make him or her in the Chiha or you know, or any other parts of the clans that's in there. And you can either a you know, go you know, go with a Rasengan or, or like a wind style abilities, or b go with a lightning style abilities using the uh, uh, Oh gosh, I forgot that I forgot that one ability that Chidori, that's what I was thinking of. Uh, you would think that there'd be more games a little bit like Xenoverse, but a little bit better mechanics. I've actually never played the Xenoverse game. You haven't? I don't really play games that are based on animes. Hmm. Well, I mean it's a good it's a good game. My thing about it is, I would not do PvP in it. I, I would not. I would not do player versus player in that because it, it, it's like it, it, it's in a sense like most fighting games. I mean, have you played like Mortal Kombat or anything? It's been quite a while, but yeah, I've played it. It's basically it, it, games like Dragon Ball, Naruto, and such are, in a sense, kind of like Mortal Kombat, where um, basically the uh, you know the quicker you can bu you can button smash, the 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 more chance you have of winning. Although yeah, what yeah. I don't like about Xenoverse is ha know. is how when it comes to a lot of people that ha that makes a character that is. Sole purpose is to be in like a player versus player matchup. Um, a lot of people I've noticed will put all of their attribute points and such that they acquire from leveling up. A lot of them will either will put all their um, all of their uh, skill points in like basic attack, and and then uh, like half of the half of the of the skill points in basic attack. And then, like um, one fourth of the re of the rest into like health, and then the other fourth into either um, super strikes, key blasts, or stamina, or key or key energy. Okay, I am back. I did do something. But anyway, yeah, I was speaking which yeah, most people, and also most people actually uh, hacked the game because when I first got the universe day one, I got it uh, pre ordered. Like in the very first day, like everybody had level eighty characters. So I was like, okay, this is definitely not possible. And I looked and like, yeah, of course, everybody just completely hacked the game and got maximum characters and everything unlocked like on the first day. So yeah, you're dealing with that on a uh, Xenoverse as well. People, you know, hacking the game and unlocking yeah. everything. You know, just yes, yeah, that, that's why with me, I. That's why with me, I, I try to just, and this is something I've always mentioned in my videos is, and it, which is pretty much with any of my, any games I've played and done a video on is majority of the games that I, that you will play that has a multiplayer aspect to it. 
honestly, it's a lot better to play when you're playing with friends. Because you're playing yeah. with people that you know are not going to hack. And I've never, you know, and have never previously hacked a game before. And also, I do gotta say, uh, your friends still have patience because most people, like, I've played like Helldivers and one MMO. There's one MMO called Skyforge that I actually had to delete because, you know, for other stuff. Yeah, yeah there's like MMOs, uh, Helldivers, and other sort of multiplayer games. Like, people don't have patience at all. Like, I would say, okay, be right back. And most people, and first of all, most people, they don't, when they leave, they don't even say be right back. They just say, like, just leave and then, you know, you wait 10 minutes and then they'll, they'll you have to kick them out. For me, like, I but you know, be right back. I take 30 seconds to go and pee, come back, and I'm already out the game because, you know, people have no patience at all. Can't even wait 30 seconds. Like, I'm thinking now, like, I have to say, oh, be right back. Gotta go take a piss. For 30 to 45 seconds, don't kick me out. But it's just people now. What about washing really, your hands? Yeah, that, that, come, that comes into the 30 and 45 seconds. I, yeah, that, that's, I, you, you can't really? wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wash your hands within 45 seconds. I mean... I mean, first, I mean, first morning piss, that takes like, what, a minute at most, and then probably like another uh, eight seconds to wash your hands, but I mean, it's just, just in the middle of the day, you know, you're taking more than an hour to, to pee, you're just, you're just playing with it, you know. <laughs> you know wow. <laughs> I mean, it's only taking like about 30 seconds wow. to, to pee, you know what I'm saying? It only takes 30 seconds, you know, quick and out. You know, that explains why there's never a line in a guy's restroom. Uh, oh, there, rarely a, ever a yeah, line. There, there's a line. There is definitely a line. But but there are like way longer lines in a like, women's restroom. Yeah, I do. Because I was at um first time going to Six Flags. Like the women's line were just out the just all, all the way around on the other side of the, uh, the, the restroom. But yeah, like, for the most part, you know, the guy's bathroom, we just you know, go in piss come out you know that's it unless you're in like, uh, a at the most event. yeah sporting's event that, that's that's where the lines are that's where the lines are but, yeah like, if it's a yeah. sporting event like football basketball or something or any other sports yeah then men's lo- men's rooms are gonna have like uh somewhat of a line but if you go out to like an amusement <laughs> like any sort of like amusement park or anything um then yeah you like the the only thing for the men is that I paying for a line in the men's restroom was only like the few times where it's like if I if I was um out at like uh Disney World or down the Six Flags or Sea World and if I have to go to the restroom, like if there's any sort of line, it's just like right at the door. Like I'll open up and there's like um, like, like a small line in front of me. Yeah, I'll take like one step to, in. There, there's the line. Yeah, but yeah, I'll you look. To... But then you know, I'll turn. You know, I'll come out and then look at the women's side, and you know, it's like it's like about I don't know, probably about ten, fifteen feet uh, wor- uh, worth of women. You know, waiting to get in and do their own business and whatnot. You know what? I never asked. Like, like is like. That- Oh, you, you go first. I'm sorry, what are you going to say, Wolf? Yeah. That at school, there are some of the restrooms here that have couches, so you can just sit while you wait. Oh, if there was couches in the guys' room, that would have been pissed off, especially in high school. Because high school kids, we don't give a shit. We would have been pissed all over there. But anyways, like, I was going to ask, like, is there, like, <laughs> are there, uh, like, restroom etiquettes in, like, uh, women's restroom, much like the guys are saying, so, like, you know, like, like, I mean, Chris, you know, like, you know, if there's a stall, there's three stalls, you know, you go on one end, you go on the other. If there's, like, you don't go, nobody goes into the middle stall. Like, it's basically, is there, like, stuff like that, you know, like, not going into the middle urinal or stall or, or something? Women's restrooms really are like too that. crowded for people to care about who's in the stall next to them. Sometimes well, you see someone come nice. out of the stall and you go, like, oh, those are cute shoes. <laughs> And then they're like, oh, thanks, I got it on sale. Oh, where? I mean, like, well, what if, uh, I don't want to get the podcast. Yeah, man, we don't, 
yeah, yeah, we man, we 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 don't care. We just go in. We we find the closest stall that we can that's empty, and then we just go. We just go in, do our business, get out, go to go to the sink. I'm talking, I'm we don't like the, talk. Uh, we don't do anything. Yeah, I'm talking about like, the urinals. Like, like you go into the, the middle restroom. one. Or are you going to the sides? You've met some of your best friends in the restrooms? Like, I was at this one show, and I was washing my hands, and this girl came in, and I was like, you have some gorgeous earrings. And she was like, oh, thanks, I got them in Hot Topic. And we talked for, like, 20 minutes, and she was like, I'm going to add you on Facebook, okay? And then, because she's, like, this really preppy girl. And so we've chatted for a long time, and now she actually comes to this school. So I get to see her every day. Yeah, that happened in the guy's room. There's two things would happen. Two things you would think of. One, he's weird as hell. Or two, he's gay. That's the only thing. You would not want to talk to somebody, some guy in like a, a guy's restroom. Or either you're like accomplice. Did I say accomplice? Man, like my <laughs> grammar is going off. Like either or you're accomplice. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? In like a crime or something. Yeah. Yeah, the only time I think I've ever had anybody, or uh, the only thing I, I think I've ever had some random guy in the restroom um, talk to me was only to ask me a question, and really the only question would be, and this and this was because apparently his phone was dead, and he uh, of course did not have a watch on him. His question to me was, "Hey, do you have the time?" I was like, "Yeah, here's the time." That's yeah, it. That 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 would probably yeah. be the only yeah, like that, one yeah, the only little yeah, qu- like, um, what time thing is that would happen it? in a men's restroom. Yeah, like what time's in it? Uh, yeah, what time is it? Or if you're like in, or what time's the show starting or some shit like that? Yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. or, or like, like if you're, or I was gonna say like, or you have like a sort of a jackass friend who's like really tall, this will like leap over the stalls to see people. That, that's, that's like really just. Send your tall ass back away. Like you ever had that? Like some, like one of your friends who like really tall is so like look over the stalls and like just weird you out. Yeah, that's, I don't know if I've ever like, really had that happen, <laughs> but that shit sort of happens. So that's like, which is r- really <laughs> annoying. If you have like a friend who's like really tall, so like leaps over the the stalls, like trying to see like to see you. Like come on, man, I'm trying to. There's a reason why there's stalls here. Yeah. Girls, sometimes we don't even go to the bathroom to use it. We just go in there to talk. Although I would say, like, it, 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 it's like it, it, it's like the one. It's like the little meeting area of where uh, where the talk is. Like, hey, we need to talk. Okay, I'll meet. Uh, I'll meet you in the bathroom. Sometimes, like, if. One of your friends is getting um, flirted with by some creepy random guy. It's like, hey, uh, I need to go to the bathroom. Can you go with me? Sure. And then you'll go to the bathroom and you hide uh, I'll until he goes to, away. You know, like, I'll go to the bathroom. <laughs> to, well, I got it's right next door. You know, the walls are really hollow. I can hear you pee. Mm. Yeah, that's <laughs> sort of weirdo. Now that is very creepy right there. <laughs> Although, uh, I would say like in uh, high about school. stuff too. Yeah, I mean, in high school, like me and my friend, we used to like uh, sell cell phones in the bathroom, like cell phones and iPods that we had found. I, no, first of all, like we actually did find these lost, forgotten cell phone and iPod. We didn't steal them for say. We just, you know, we just see see that hey, you left your hey, that person left his or hers uh cell phone slash iPod. Let's take it, delete all the stuff off of it, and then tomorrow sell it right back to them as if it's not theirs. And that's the shit that we did. We got paid off of it. Mm, wow. <laughs> we got paid off of it. Like we were yeah, yeah, it was, it was sort of a uh, grimy, scummy stuff that we did. I mean, I'll still do it today, but like, uh, we don't we don't do it that much. Yeah. yeah I miss things what, uh, in bathrooms. Like, I've found went, cell phones, I found purses, I've found, oh, like, man. wedding wings. Purses, oh, psh. 
man, you know, one time, like, my friend, like, she had found, like, someone's purse on a bus. Like, I, I told her, like, if it was me or, like, another friend, like, we had found it. We would, like, just ransack it, got anything inside of it, just sold it. Like, we would sold the purse, sold whatever's inside of it, make some quick dollars. You know, it's very easy. Very easy. Yeah, you, yes. you'll find... You could probably find just about everything in a bathroom if you if you to like look really hard for it. Like name any uh, uh, like it could be the co- most common of things. It could be the most weirdest of things, and just go into just go into a bathroom and you'll be able to find it. I could find it. I've found a hot glue gun is. before in a bathroom. A what? A, glue a gun. what? A hot glue gun. A glue oh, a hot glue gun. gun. Why the hell? Why the hell was that a hot glue gun in the bathroom? I don't know. Up, I've also found up, like little paper up, yeah. mache sculptures, like on the counter paper in the bathroom. And I'm just right. thinking, the art kids really don't care about their artwork if they just leave it in here. Ah, I would have pissed on it. <laughs> Straight up. And how oh, would well, I do well, that? Well, I would have to climb up on the counter, and then people no. would probably walk in. Nah, don't, I'm, put, don't like put it on the doing. counter. Just take it and put it by the toilet and it just go be in by the toilet and put it back on the counter. And it's like, oh, I guess it... But now I have to touch my own pee. If you wash your hands, pff, you don't wash your hands. Okay, everybody, Woeful does not wash your hands after she uses the bathroom. Just, I wash my hands. Nope, I wash just, my hands no, more than a minute. Straight up, inadvertently say, you don't wash your hands. So it's, 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 you kidding me? I bet you she probably washes her hands a lot more than we do. Well, I wash my hands all the time, like, even if I take off the trash. I wash my hands and I germex yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly! We just wash them! Yeah, I just wash my hands, though. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I go, I, I turn the water on, put, so, uh, put soap in my hand, wash them, rinse, done. No germex or anything. Although I, have I also germex my hands every time I shake people's hands. People might think I'm a okay. germaphobe, I don't know. but I cook well, a lot. One time, I did do that. But it was a homeless guy who had high five, so that was kind of, I guess, logical of washing <laughs> my hands after high fiving a guy who was homeless. And his hand was like pretty dirty, so I was like, ah, you gotta wash my hands after this. So yeah. Some people get offended when I germex my hands after I give them high fives or handshakes. Like, what do you think we're filthy animals? I'm like, no. It's just you yes. know what diseases people have. You know what? It was like something that's sort of like a... Exactly. Sure. It's like... Okay. Hold up. Let me say this first. I'm not sure this was racist or anything. Basically, like... Like, at school... Like, for me, like, my hands were, like, really clean. Like, I, like... Like, at school, I would think, like, a... Certain black people who, like... You know, like, back of the hand, like... Like, sort of, like, a pinkish white. Like, mine's is like, you know, pinkish white. I would think that, like, certain black people... I didn't know. Like, their hands were, like... Kind of uh, darkish brown. I thought that everybody's was like sort of pinkish white because of mines and my mom's or my grandma's were. So I thought like, oh, everybody's yeah. like this. So like, I would see like some of my friends, their hands, the the, the fronts of their hands were like no, like kind of brown and dark. I would think that you know that was a lot of dirt. So I was like sort of hesitant to shake their hands or anything because I was thinking like, oh, that's a shit ton of dirt on their hands. So was that sort of racist or something? I mean, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, you never know. <laughs> I didn't know. You didn't know. I just, uh, just thought like, oh, he has some oh, fucking reading? dirty ass hands. Is shit brown What'd you say, Wolf? I said, how old were you? Oh, was when like, you did this? Like, I don't know. Like, it was like however, however old you were, like the third grade or fourth grade. So like, what, nine or ten or something? Is it Hello? Kind of- I was homeschooled, Sorry. so I don't really know the ages for the grades. Uh, like, I don't know. I was homeschooled, too, so... <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah, like, nine or Got two, it. I guess. But, yeah. Okay, nine or so ten, easy. so probably about middle school-ish or so. Yeah, like, however, however old you are in, like, third grade, I'm not sure. Like, I was, like, pretty old for third grade, cause, just because my birthday... So yeah, like you know, nine or ten, I was just like, "Oh, you have very dirty hands. Oh, well, I'll shake you. Then let me you know, just wash my hands right after." <laughs> and then like you know when people like so like grab for like some M and M's, I'm like, "Hold up, 
put your hands out and I'll individually give you these M&M slash Skittles or Mentoys or whatever. I didn't, didn't really like that. So, I'm yeah. done with everybody. I don't want people reaching their hands in my snacks. Yeah, but I thought that their hands were like straight up dirty. Mine's were like borderline innocently racist, <laughs> even though I didn't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, me on that point, you know, I'll hold my hand. You know, if somebody, uh, you know, somebody offers me, you know, would you like, would you like um, some candy? You know, I'll be like, sure, and I'll pull my hand out. You know, probably. I mean, um, for me, it's like this: unless you, uh, you know, unless you, t- uh, unless you tell me, oh man, you know, just stick your hand in there and grab and grab what you want. You know, if somebody tells me that, it's like, okay, you know, I'll respect. I'll, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'm just gonna ha- hold on my hand and let you give me, you know, the sum of what you're offering. All right. If Otherwise, had, you know, it's just if, like you said. Well, if I had known the person, like, really well, and they asked me, like, just stick my hand in there, I would just stick, like, my, my entire fist in there. So, like, grind it around and then pull it out. And it's like, hey, you told me to put my hand in there. Like, yeah, just sort of, like, make it really weird and make them wish they never had said that. Yeah, I'm, I'm that type. I'm that type of guy who would do some shit like that. Yeah, just make him make him pay for it. <laughs> but yeah, <What's> up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like uh, okay, like I mean, I wouldn't lick my hands, so yeah, so, yeah, I wouldn't lick them or anything. You know, no, salty, yeah, that, that be that yeah. just be you being creepy. Yeah, if you that's, did just that. me, that's just me being more of an ass than I am. So yeah, wouldn't do that much. <laughs> yeah, let's get back on topic. The more of you was. So Which you know, topic were we on either way? Is it gluten free dating? No, that's gluten free dating. <laughs> you want all right, you wanna talk about gluten free dating? I could uh pull up this up. But no, we were talking still about the uh the anime based games. Animes. Games based anime. Vice versa or versa vice. And and if it's I know, let's face I tried it, to it's say really nice not versa that backwards mid- like the first in place. What that? Oh, there, there are like a ton of anime and base games and games based anime. Like one well, recently that's coming out okay. on Steam is a uh, Trigger Happy Havoc, which is the original game for Don Don Rampa, which is also like I gotta say for the anime it was very stylish, and it's also produced pro- produced by Lurch, who also produced Assassin Assassination Classroom, which is why. You know the anime. Both both of those animes are like really stylish, and they sort of like kept the f- and the the anime for Assassin's Creed Classroom kept the feel of the manga, and the anime for Dragon Rampa kept the feel of the game. Like even like when I first saw it, like it looked exactly like how a game would play. Like I actually thought that oh, so this is definitely an anime that's supposed to be a game. But like I I read up on it like okay, so the anime came second the game was first so yeah it really did have some good uh stylish to it stylization styles to it where you know the anime both the anime and game was actually pretty good and also Duncan Rampa the trigger happy havoc is also coming on Steam February I don't know the date exactly I got I got on my wish list so I'm gonna definitely do a uh play through of that because I want to see the actual story because the anime doesn't go through the entire story it just goes like the main stuff and then you know that's pretty much it i mean although the story is pretty good though i mean and uh yeah of course the anime sort of spoils the game if you haven't played the game so like i would probably just fly right through the game but no there's still some story stuff that i haven't know that i don't know yet true yeah. although i will say you know when coming you know Let's face this on the, when it comes to like ga- um, anime games and whatnot. I mean, correct, there are a lot of anime games. Uh, I mean, games that are based off of animes. But you know, I think it's probably safe to say that let's be real. Majority of those games that are based off of current anime, some, uh, some, if not a lot of the good ones that have like really good game mechanics and that really fits everything well with the anime that's based off of are exclusive in Japan only. Yeah, like uh what was it? Well this isn't an anime one, but it's the There is uh, 
the uh I forgot what it was. It was, it was on it was on the three it was on no wait, it wasn't the three DS, it was back on the DS. It was the Shonen Jump Rumble All Star something that had like every all the characters from like Shonen the Shonen magazine. Like that was strictly Japanese Japan only, which sort of disappointed because like I would really want to play like, you know, a uh Super Smash Brothers style game, but with like anime characters, you know, playing as Light Yagami, who is super OP in that game. He just has to like write down people's names, and that's pretty much you just beat everyone. Or you play as Luffy from One Piece or Goku from Dragon Ball Z and all these other characters. So, yeah, that's one game that's like yeah. strictly for Japanese release. Although, yeah, that, that there was one like anime manga since that's since this, uh. Shonen does have like crossover mangas sometimes. They have, I know there's one crossover of like One Piece and Dragon Ball Z and stuff. Yeah. yeah there was one, um, uh, there, there was one Gundam game that Team Four Star had did a, uh, a live stream in. I gotta find it here. I'm looking for it right now in their uh, gaming channel. But like it was again, it was a Gundam, it was a Gundam based uh, game, and it was a lot better than. And from the live stream that they did, the game itself is, from what I've seen, uh, was a lot better um, than any uh, than any of the other any of the uh, the current Gundam games that have been out. Like this one game that I know that is. Kinda good. Um, I can't remember what was going. Uh, what Gundam game it is? My oh, girlfriend wow. I know played it once. I, I don't remember the name uh, the name of the game, but it's like it was kind of it was a Gundam ish game, but it wasn't. It it, it 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 was it wasn't what most would expect from like a Gundam ish game. Okay, here's again that. Team Four Star did uh, Gundam Extreme versus Full bu- uh, Full Boost. That game right there is is only exclusive in uh, Japan, Japan, and yeah. yeah, you can pretty much play any of the, um in any of the well before Build Fighter came out, anything any of the current um, mechs and everything that were in Gundam before Build Fighter. You you were able to pretty much play all the Gundams, all the Zaku's, and all the other mobile suits and everything that were in any uh, almost any of the Gundam series, like uh, Gundam Double O, um, Gundam Wing, Sea Destiny, G Gundam Fighter, everything. And the closest thing, like sort of Gundam games, would be the uh, Super Robot Tyson games, which unfortunately. There's only two Super Robot Tyson games in the U.S. Mainly because, well, no, there's there's three, but the third one is just completely garbage. But there's two really good ones that's only available in the U.S. Mainly because it has original uh, characters. Basically, in the Super Robot Tyson universe, it has all every single mech anime inside the game, which is why uh, it's not available in the U.S. because of copyright laws and the u.s copyright laws are completely different of of the uh japan's copyright laws that's why you'll see like more and more crossovers in japan instead of you know crossovers over in america which is why like you know if you ever do see like crossovers in a cartoon it would mainly be because either the creators or producers both do the same show like um jimmy neutron and uh fairly odd parents crossover that was done by the same person the creator is the same guy, and uh, also the Generator Rex and Ben 10 crossover, which was pretty good. I'm not sure if there's a Generator Rex. I'm not sure if he ever made, like, a second crossover to continue the story, but yeah, like, it's also done by the same guy who does, you know, Ben 10 and Generator Rex. That's, that's mainly because, you know, the crossovers, the copyright issues in America is, like, completely different for Japan. So, yeah, you wouldn't see too much uh, crossovers too much. Which is a little bit unfortunate because I really do like the Super yeah. Robot Tyson uh, games. It's, it's sort of like a turn-based tactical, but not too much uh, overwhelming in terms of like mechanics. And it does do more like a story. There's like just a ton 
a ton of story. It's like you have to read through a whole lot of shit. It's like it's like an actual anime. You're just read through hours of dialogue, and that's just for like the first part. So yeah, there you you have to work out that stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking through some of the games right now that are alpha uh, that are around for um that are like Gundam based. Like one that's kind of good that my girlfriend played once is uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam Three. That I've looked at the gameplay and every and everything. It's pretty good, but pretty much it's more like the. N- <sighs> Yeah, I hate to say to, to have it sound like this. It's more like the it, it's kind of a little bit like the new um, uh, One Piece game that's uh, soon to come out uh, on Steam. Can't um, remember the exact name of it. I know there's a recent One Piece, but I'm not seeing the new one. Oh, yeah, Speed Wars. There's like a another sort of anime game that's. I guess you would equate it to like the uh, Dragon Ball Z sort of fighting type game, the Saint Sienna. AKA Zodiac Warriors game, or, or just ah, here it is. One Piece, yeah. yeah, here it is. One Piece Pirate Warriors, here it is. Whereas, like, you got like hundreds of different things, and now that your one character can fight through, and like little out al- like single allies can fight through, you got all these like little, you got all these little guys that will take with you can punch and only take like one or two hits just to kill and then you got the boss where it where it actually feels like you're fighting a true enemy rather than just going all through the grunts. Is it like a Dynasty Blue Warrior Blue? Gundams was Oh Dynasty like Warriors. What? Okay, I was gonna say like okay so oh so it plays like, you know, Dynasty Warriors, you know. Does it does it play like Dynasty Warriors it, or it, it, it plays exactly it? like Dynasty okay. I was about to say, does it play like it's, it, or is that just the name for it? Yeah, that's that's uh, the name of the game, and it plays exactly like Dynasty uh, Warriors, because it's Dynasty Warriors Gundam. So okay. instead of playing, so instead of playing, so it, it's exactly like Dynasty Warriors, except for, instead of playing as people, you're playing as Gundams. Like, and Zaku's another yeah. mechs. <laughs> I mean, Dynasty Warriors is pretty good. But I sort of feel like those type of games sort of get it sort of like kind of played out after a while because we're pretty much facing off like just like more than like 100 or 200 the same type of enemies and then probably like, you know, one world boss and that's pretty much it. It's, it's, I was like a feel that's a that's- sort of boring after a while. I mean, if, Pretty first, like the first couple of hours, it will be really good, but after a while, it just sort of becomes the same thing over and over again. Yeah, that was pretty much the last. I think that was like the last uh, Gundam game that was played that was released in the U.S. That was uh, that was out. Any other and any other games that would and that would have come out after Dynasty Warrior Gundam Three, I think, was exclusive to the. Um, uh, ex- exclusive to um, uh, to Japan because like the new game that, that I'm looking at because like one game that I'm, that I'm looking at on the Google shop is called Mobile Suit Gundam Target in Sight and the three stores you can buy that is all in Japan only three stores in the world people so why don't you head on to Japan and only three Find stores were only three stores oh, in the yeah, world guess and guess what? One guy they on may give eBay you the dollar amount. And one guy on eBay trying to pay like nine hundred ninety nine dollars for it. Or sell nine hundred ninety nine dollars for it. Cause people will do I ever seen that shit like when people put like a product who's like a, a product that's like really cheap, but then you know go on eBay and it's like nine hundred dollars or some shit like that. Yeah. The The answer is simple. We must go to Japan and buy. buy (laughs) Yes. (laughs) But I don't want to go to Japan because then I'm paying thousands of dollars for a ticket to go to Japan, and then how the heck am I going to get back home to Texas? 
That's well, true. Just... See, I have a way of getting stuff from Japan because my brother lives there. So I can just be like, David, Sally, get me something. Well, just... <laughs> it's like, he'll buy me something if I call him Sally because he loves that nickname. Yeah. And he's like, sure thing, princess. He's a good big brother. <laughs> See, he's a year older than me. And so we pretty much hung out when Jared was like an angsty teenager. It was angsty teen Jared. And then my our sister Whitney, who was like this really girly girl. And so she was all butterflies and rainbows. And then it was just me and Davey. And we were like, destruction, death. Let's make video games. Yeah, I never let's like make that. video games. Let's video games. Let's you know, destroy the world. Children. Yeah, I never had like a really sort of like angsty teen phase. I like, like my whole phase back then and still now was really just don't give a shit about anything. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much like why even care about being angsty? Oh, I actually bit my tongue there. Why even care about being angsty or rebellion? This is the same shit. Who cares? Like, and I'm still like that today, but uh, less much. Eh, I'm sort of pretty much still the don't care about anything. But yeah, yeah the answer to that is you is you you're mature. Yeah. Well, I was. Well, I actually I was found already... some poems that my brother. What? You actually found some what? I actually found some poems that my brother wrote when he was 13 the other day. I uh, it was like darkness all around me. I am so sad. My heart and soul is like ink on a page. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I just don't know what that emo like, no back offense then. No your brother, but I, if, I was, if I had read it, I'd be like, oh, what's up this douchebag? bag? And then I just ran. <laughs> Although one time I did. <laughs> I did. pretty emo back then. Oh, I did. <laughs> not, but you didn't realize how emo till then. <laughs> yeah. Like one time I did, like, like right? <laughs> I was gonna say like one time I did uh, write a journal, but halfway in writing my journal, I'm like what the fuck am I doing? Why am I writing a journal? I just tossed it away. It was like yeah, what am I writing a journal for? It was like, yeah, it was, that was like the only sort of writing that I actually did, like a small journal. I was like just halfway through writing it, my entry, I'm just like, why am I really writing a journal? Then I just tossed it away and used that journal to draw stuff <laughs> in. A big graffiti art and some anime stuff. My diary pretty much consisted of Dear Diary, today I was banned from going to the funeral home. I annoy them. You got kicked it's out a sad of day. <laughs> you got kicked out of a funeral home? You what were you doing? Do? Like, disturbing the dead? <laughs> I was just walking around looking at coffins and asking if I could try. Wait, asking Wait, what? Up. Wait, yeah, I you bet. actually cut out. Asking so. if I could go in the coffins. All right, well, well, you, uh, it, well of course, that's a weird ass girl who wants to go inside a coffin. Right, so, okay, I can see that. And so, well, like, I wasn't bad or anything because they're used to the McClendon family shenanigans. Because my grandfather would constantly send people over there going, hey, if you want to discount dentures, just go over. And ask, they'll just yank one out of a corpse. <laughs> be nothing there. And so. my grandpa would like hide in graves sometimes, just, you know, like the freshly dug ones before they put a body in. And he would just jump out and scare people. Yeah, like my best one. friend had tried to convince me that the day he dies, that I would need to, that I or one or one of our friends would have to do this little thing that would probably just scare the shit out of people. And the thing he wanted some one of us to do was if some if like he was to die, he wanted somebody to dress up as like the Grim Reaper with the scythe and all, and. Show up at the you know when, and you know when they come up to the point, you know when they come up to where um you know, where the body was to be buried, like out in like like out in the open someplace, you know people would see the.
Grim Reaper right there. And then, you know, and he'd be like, and what he would want was like the Grim Reaper being like about like a good like 20, 30, 40 feet away from the gravesite. <laughs> and then, you know, let the proceedings go on. And then after everything was gone, you know, when people were starting to leave, but um, before the last person left, the Grim Reaper, uh, he would want the Grim Reaper to start walking towards his grave. As PA uh, before everybody was le- everybody had left. Was this the episode of Jackass? I need to know. Was this- no. <laughs> okay. No, th- this was something my best friend had came up with. All right, so he is. You are not best friends with uh, Johnny Knoxville or Steve, whatever his name is. Or no, but I do Steve- believe that he got the idea from Steve-O. him. Okay, yeah, it was that yeah, Steve O. Yeah. <laughs> the weirdest thing involving my own death that I want was when I was 12, I went up to my mom and I was like, Mom, my heart and put it in a vial so my heart will always be with you. And she Wait, was like, what? Sweetie, no. When I was 12, I asked my mom if she could cremate my heart um, after I die and just stick it in a vial. <laughs> I never even got into that stuff. I'm just like... Whatever. I don't mean the lab, but wow. I told you, I was a creepy kid. <laughs> yeah. Any other creepy stories you like to share? I have quite a few, but I also have some like really weird ones, like how I broke my arm. Jared was like, hey, Maggie, do you want to learn how to fly? And he threw me off our porch, and it was like a <laughs> six-foot-tall porch. But he was like, no hesitation, just picked me up and threw me. <laughs> I was four. And I, he was either 15 or 16 when he did this. Just tossed me. Yeah, I would never... Um, That's okay. A limb thingy I could uh, fly or walk on water or anything. I mean, I knew it was possible. I mean, of course, everybody wants to think they can fly it, but realistically, it's not possible. Although there was like a one kid... I believe I can fly. I mean, the only stupid thing. Most I mean, of my scars this, are like, from Jared. Like, have you ever like noticed a kid like the only? School? Like, uh, you ever seen like a kid in school like actually stick their finger in one of those uh automatic the <clears throat> pistol sharpeners? Like, what was, what was more stupid? Like, it was like back when I was in first grade. It was, like a kid who was like jokingly was going to stick his finger in the uh, sharpener. Even though he knew full well that it was definitely going to um, cut his finger, he just did it anyway. So, like, was fucking dumbass. So, yeah. And also, it was the same guy who had to uh, eat toilet paper. Well, not toilet paper, but tissue. And I, I asked him, like, why are you eating tissue? I was just like, oh, I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, I can't deal with this shit. I mean, I didn't say shit, but, like, you know, it's. Wow. I was really. I think the only. I was really like uh, mean as a kid. I was, like, just didn't care about anything. Like whatever. I if I didn't care, about <laughs> I think the only thing I can I remember was cared back then. <laughs> I think the only thing I remember happened. Um, anybody I know that I had anything going on with like broken limbs or anything? Um, a friend of mine, his sister, had broken her arm somehow. I don't know. I don't know what she did. She jumped off of. Uh, like the house or something and like or, or fell or something, I don't know but she broke her arm and had to go to the emergency room but before but when she went into the house to tell her mom that uh, she had broken her arm her arm was kind of uh, the only way the one way that they knew her arm was broken was because it was slinky almost it it, it just like it was, it, the, you were. Uh, she was able the, to kind of flop it around and such. Like if she wanted to, she could probably do a windmill with it. <laughs> and she almost did. Oh, and her mother, before even thinking about going to the hospital, threw up because the first thing she saw was her arm just. just hey, if around, you've seen Harry Potter, just, oh yeah, yeah. yeah if just, you've seen Harry around, Potter, just, uh, like asshole. the. The Chamber of Secrets, when um, the the where that teacher guy was trying to repair, uh, was trying to fix Harry's arm, but pretty much, um, to, uh, but pretty much, you know, liquefied his bone structure. 
That's pretty much what happened. The arm just flopped around. Yes. I think the weirdest injury I've ever gotten was, I think I was either six or seven, and I was slicing up an orange because I was just stupid. I figured, I'm not going to peel it and get my hands all citrusy. I'm going to use a knife. And I ended up getting the handle of the knife shoved up my nose. What? <laughs> yeah, I still don't know how I did this. Mouth? What was you? Why did you shove your nose? Were you no. trying to cut it with your mouth or what? I don't know. That, the thing is, I remember starting to cut it, and then the next thing I know, walking into the bathroom, and my mom's doing her makeup, and I'm like, "Mother, mother," and she's like, "Yeah, I've made a mistake." <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> and she turned, she was like, um, what mistake did you turn? And she turned around and she was like, oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. It was oh. a weird trip to the emergency room. I've never. <laughs> That's okay. I remember my uncle. So, yeah. I, I remember my uncle. As, as a little, Rob, a mistake, um, that's a little bit. <laughs> Farther than the state, you know. That's like, I mean, putting on your left shoe or your right foot—that's a mistake. But somehow lodging the handle <laughs> of a knife up your nostril—that's a little bit too far. Some of it had to be. Like, some of it had to be like, like forceful. Seven. Some of that had to be like you know, like forceful or. I, 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 you um, say you were you were seven when you th yeah, when this happened. I was either six or seven. How the hell do you do that? I mean, a six or seven year old person, their nostrils is pretty would be pretty small. How? No, I like still a, don't know how like I did a, it. I've never seen like a, those like butter knives. Butter knives, and their handles aren't that you know big or anything. Like yeah, was, yeah, a butter knife. Yeah, but was it a butter knife you were using or what? I don't remember what kind of knife it is. I just remember it was a smaller knife because it could fit in my hand. Yeah, let's just say butter knife or like a steak knife. One of those. Yeah, you know, those are pretty small. Uh... But I know it had a white handle to it. Okay, it might have been probably a steak knife yeah. or something. But, but either up way, how? I don't know. Like. I nearly bit off my bottom lip once, so. I don't think that's uh, logically possible. You know? maybe, maybe a cannibal would do it, but I don't, I don't know if like, someone who is. So, like, I fell, sense. and I was biting down when I fell. Uh, I don't know why. And I have, like, this crescent moon scar under my lip now because of it. And when the doctor was giving me stitches, I kept on sticking my tongue through the hole. And so eventually oh. they just kind of put clamps on my tongue when they finished stitching me up. Wow. Right. The only th the only time I remember biting my lower lip was let's see, um, I was I was I was a kid. I was probably about like ab about five or six, and my parent, my mother, and my grandparents, uh, we were all at a uh, we were all at a wedding for one of my mother's friends and outside of the church they had this little playing ground area and I remember I was climbing um, I was climbing around the jungle gym and um, then I went over to the monkey bars that was um, trying and I was trying to go on the monkey bars but I guess that I no, I, I guess my hand. I, I guess uh, my hand slipped or something. and I fell, but when I fell, I you know I lay on my knees. I man, my body just kept on going forward, so I landed kind of on my head. And I guess my I guess my lip was uh, my lips were just a little bit um, like under my teeth, and so I hit the ground. Teeth bit, uh, the the teeth bites down and immediately I, I just go almost right through the skin. Yeah, yeah. I don't, like, yeah. The story of that idea it was like sort of normal stuff, like you know, like getting poked in the eye, both my eyes actually. But also, yeah, but also getting poked in my eye, I actually didn't. I actually was be able. I was able to see like perfectly fine. Like, I only only got glasses like like you know recently. Mainly because I had read 
at the time, all 300 chapters of Bleach on, you know, the internet, you know, just watching a, a still image every single, like, all <laughs> all day, every day. You know, I was watching all three, I was reading all 300 Bleach episodes, Bleach chapters on, a, I forgot, the, it was a manga reader or manga panel, one of those. <laughs> yeah, I just read that all day, every day after school. It has to know where my eyesight got bad. Not when I got stabbed in the eye, when I was like, in the first grade, I don't know how long I was in the first grade, probably like six. And then getting hit in the eye with a marble. So yeah, I got like scars on both Ooh. my eyes. Yeah. I think and the most painful then, story I've then, ever like, heard involving uh, eyeballs was my dad. Yeah. yeah. Like, my dad what? got shot in the eyeball once. Your dad got what? He got shot in the eyeball with like a um, BB gun. And oh, okay. yeah, I was like, Dad, like, was your vision affected? And he was like, how can you get more blinder than blind? <laughs> well, you can get more blind than blind. I mean, for a second there. That's I almost, okay. You want to. I almost got more I swear my dad is tall. Blind, yeah. No, I don't know if I. Oh, uh, my, the shadow over my eye is actually getting better. But yeah, like. I think. Yeah, like, uh, it, much like Harry Potter's, like, every so often, one of the scars will, like, start to burn. So, yeah, that would, that would happen, like, oh, shit, they're thinking about me. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, I, what else on that? I, I think really the four it. most painful, uh, I think for, like, a most painful, um, story of an accident that happened, uh, this happened, actually, to my Uncle Rob, um, he and a friend of his was working on was working on something in his garage, and he and him and his friend um, almost lost some limbs. Like he, oh, like my uncle, my uncle, he almost lost his thumb, and um, and his friend nearly lost his hand. Um, they blast. cut themselves. Well, no, they, they cut themselves. They kind of cut themselves with like a like a little saw or something, and they both had to go to the emergency room. And like my uncle Rod, he almost like cut his entire thumb off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But what was funny though was that they're at yeah. okay, they're at the hospital. They're all kids <laughs> stitched up, and they're laughing and joking about it while my aunt is just. You know, standing there listening to them while the doctors and nurses are working on them, hearing them, hearing them talk and laugh and joke about it. It's like, what the hell? You guys almost lo almost lost your lives. Why are you joking about it? Nah, it's limbs, not wives. You know, I mean, if it cut through the heart, then that's, that's different. But no, mm. Mm. Thumb. Mm. well, she was overreacting sure a little bit at the time. Are you sure you're going to get some blood loss to the thumb? But no, you can just, uh, like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Although I almost lost, a, although me, I uh, almost lost some, th uh, fingers. Like, uh, what was it? Back in December, actually, I almost lost my, uh, lo uh almost lost my hand. Cause that was, uh, that? almost. Lost okay, we hand. had a, ta we have a table saw in our backyard that we use to cut wood, that we use to cut wood up. And we mainly use it for like some big, uh, for like some big chunks to kind of, sp um, you know, um, split them in two. But because it's a table saw, you know, um, I was trying to, uh, I had a big piece and I was trying to kind of turn uh, you the don't wood. You turn the to wood try on. And cut it yeah. Half. First thing off, you don't turn wood on a table saw. That's rule number one. Much like with a sawzall, yeah. you don't turn on a sawzall, you keep it straight. Don't turn the wood. Yeah, well, here's the, and you know, here's the thing. I was, I was turning, I was turning it without even thinking about it. The wood got caught. My hand went in, and and I quickly jerked back. But and but and I'll say this: like the glove I was wearing came off, and the fingers on the fingers on the glove were uh, that I had <laughs> missing yes. were gone. Yeah, you would have some. The, uh... the the most injury I had gotten. Like the most injury I had gotten was I pretty much lost almost the tip of my uh, of uh, one of my fingers, but like it hurt so much because it was like the very tip, like blood was all over my hand. Could have some uh, so some uh, hobo gloves, you know, without the uh, the fingertips.
Or some, yeah, you got some bobo gloves. <laughs> yeah, but like, nah, uh, but, but like I had like a bit of the skin, some muscle, and a little bit of muscle um, taken off, like, and, um, off of the tip of one of my fingers, and blood was just going on all over everywhere in my hand. I mean, if I, and it was like this, if I didn't jerk back as I did, my fingers or my hand would have been uh, would have been completely taken off. Yes, and no more less plays, and no more anything with your hands or whatever you do with your hands. Well, you would still have one hand. Yeah, one hand. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say anything there. <laughs> not as, as much as two, you know. I mean, you got this Did I say something unintentionally dirty? Huh? No, no, no. Um, yeah, I, I'm just messed up in the mind like that. But okay. You know, Believe- you need to take a stagecraft class so you can learn, you know, machine safety. Yes. Machine oh, I, 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 pro- I, I One, probably, I probably do. Table, don't turn, don't turn wood on a saw table. It would definitely jerk the wood inside the uh, the thing. If you have a sawzall, which is you know basically a miniature chainsaw, but well, sawzall is basically like a saw blade, but like yeah, it's more like a miniature uh, chainsaw, but like you no know, more of just like a regular uh, saw blade. Keep keep it straight. Don't try to move it, cause then the saw the sawzall would actually like the blade for it would actually like jump up or either come out of the uh, the thing and just you know cut your hand or leg or whatever. So I almost had Texas me, Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. Nah, don't don't mess with that. <laughs> Mr. Chainsaw just yeah. uh <laughs> but not, but um what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, but um Wolfful, if you want if if you want dirty, you should have seen what was it? Thursday yeah, l- uh, last Thursday when I was um uh what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was doing a D and I was uh, doing the online D and D stream and uh there were uh, let's just say there was a lot of dick jokes going around. <laughs> Oh, Why would I want to hear that? <laughs> yes, Brian. For the hilarity. Why would she want to hear dick jokes? For, for the hilarity, for uh, for listening to uh, to us pretty much spending, I think it was like, I think we pretty much spent like 10 minutes just laughing our asses off when we should have been continuing on going through the dungeon that we were in. And all of that... Because of dicks, and that's where I'm going to end the podcast. Yes, right at dick. Um, so that's going to be, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're going to leave at dicks. <laughs> we're going to leave at dicks. Yeah, because it's, it's going close to like uh two hours. And also, I actually did sort of accomplish what I wanted to do for this podcast. I want to talk about uh, well, kind of loosely talked about you know anime games and why some of them are bad or terrible. One I would say uh was one. It's not. It was the MMO. It's the MMO for Ghost in the Shell. It's all Ghost of the Shell standalone complex. First, I think. First Assault Online. That is a really long title. Yeah, this is the MMO yeah. version of uh, the Ghost of the Shell anime. And it's, it's it plays pretty well. So, yeah. It's, and also. It does? I did, yeah, it kind of does. kind of plays pretty well. I mean, it's still in uh, sort of early access or whatever it will be called for MMO, like closed beta. Or early like access? That. Yeah, yeah, it's still in like early access a bit. I mean, it's still getting update, but it's, it still plays well. You know, it's not a uh, too much graphical glitches or anything. You know, I mean, anybody can pick it up. It is a first person game. Uh, like for, for me, I don't really like first person all too much because I like to see the character in its environment. But uh, it, it does plays uh pretty well. And also, I did want to talk about another topic some something weird and uh, we definitely did have talked about some uh weird shit some weird weirdness. stuff yes weird stuff yes you you can say shit bro so what were you guys like when you were little huh huh were y'all as creepy as me when you were little eh, it was more like just mean and did not care eh. as much as of now i, mean, I want to say creepy i mean I, you know, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I played Stutter around, you know, I played around, I played the bit. Oh, yes. I didn't stutter a lot. Uh, yeah. I did not, but, like, I played around, you know, I, I you know, played around, I don't know, quite a bit. I, 
did a lot. I, did, I actually did a lot of video game playing um, back then, still as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm just I was pretty much a like, video gamer. <laughs> yeah, I was just sort of like meaner, but not like bully mean. Like the two meanest, two of the meanest things that I did. Like one, I just, I just say one of them. I won't say the second one. The second one, I'll leave that for another podcast. But one of them, it was like. The kid in our first of all, you know, in every school there's a Butters in the classroom. If you don't know who Butters is, basically uh, South Park Butters. Yes, there there was a kid who was exactly like Butters. Like he actually went to the urinal. Like he would, in the urinal, he would like pull down his pants and everything, and just pee. I'm like, why do you do that? Just to go into the stall. Like I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, I can't deal with this. I just go into the stall. I I never wanted to like. <laughs> Yeah, you know when you're like uh high school, I mean not say high school, like a uh, first grade or like you know, like first grade or second grade, you know, you get paired up to go to the restroom. Like I never wanted to get paired up with him because he just completely take off everything to, just to go in the urinal. I'm like, I can't deal with this. It's going to just wait, wait, wait. everything and well, not everything, like... just like, you know, <laughs> his pants and then underwear and then I'm like peeing in the urinal. I'm like, just unzip and that's it if you're gonna do that going to the stalls i'm like i'm scared I'm like ah, this dork or nerd or back then we used to say gay bob even though it had nothing to do with uh homosexuality we just call people gay bob and also you know what much like um louis ck we call people faggots not because they were gay or anything we just called them faggots because they were faggots you know faggot just mean faggot it didn't mean any sort of slander to uh gay people or anything just, just like that's yeah, just fucking faggot and not like you know like <laughs> yeah. how people want to use the word right now yeah i mean i think the guy's name was like michael or something so yeah we definitely uh called him faggot back then like oh look at this fucking guy can't but anyways uh michael which was the sure butters. wasn't lebron james <laughs> Which was the butters of our class. Like one day, I got in trouble because I didn't get to class quick enough. Because uh, I think I was in the bathroom, and I was washing my hands, and the bell rang, and the teacher was like, "Oh, you're a couple of seconds late. Stand outside in the sun." I'm, and for me, I never understood like that. I never understood that as a punishment, like standing outside in the warmth of the sun, not having to sit in class, not having to do work. Just, you know, stay outside and look at the birds. Like, I never saw that as a punishment. I'm like, okay, thank you. I get to not do schoolwork. Well, good thing for you. So, yeah, I, just, I stood outside in class. And then Butters of our school, like, I would see him. He was sitting, like, uh, in the uh, the doorway. And I was I saw him, like, you know, stick his hand in and out through the, uh, the crevice of the door and the wall. And I was like, I don't want that door to shut on his fingers and have him just just wail and that's what I have like he was sticking his fingers in and out between the door and the wall and like the door just shut on him and it just smashed his fingers his fingers completely and I was like this is the greatest this is the greatest day ever like everything that I wanted <laughs> happened I didn't have to go to class butters or whatever had his hand fingers just smashed duct stuck on the wall but here's where the bad thing happened, which eh, I shouldn't say bad, because for most people, probably a good thing. But for me, it was a bad thing. One thing, uh, what the bad thing that happened was my dad came to pick me up, and he saw the kid, you know, crying and got his finger smashed and getting smashed. Getting, well, I don't know how to say it, like getting more and more progressively smashed and broken as the door forces close on his hand. Like he saw him, like you know, crying and stuff. And he's like, you know, he's. Helping him out. And what I did, which sort of like a uh, proves point of how, you know, mean I was or whatever. I was I was yelling at my dad, like, you know, forget about him unless let's just go home. You know, so what? It's a <laughs> oh, kid. Wow. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't care. I mean, if I, was, if I was my dad, I was like, well, pff, at least my son's not that stupid. And I was going home. You know, just going home. Have a kid just... Wow. I would have just, I really would have just left the kid, like, whatever, my son's not that stupid, let's go home, let's go watch the Mario show, because that's what I did back then, watching the Mario show. That kind of makes you wonder where, uh, you know, where um, kids have gone these days, 
don't worry, they've gone doing gaming, but acting, but but uh, cu uh, cussing so uh, so much that they would definitely make more than one sailor blush. Yes, and also have no idea the process of like game development or anything, and just. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, you know, I'll do that like another podcast, like just people who have like no idea what of <laughs> what the process it takes over a game. Because there was uh, one game that I've uh, actually reviewed, I actually do kind of like. Because uh, you know what the fuck it up? Uh, keep the podcast going, whatever. It's not, it's not over. Going just got, do it right now. <laughs> yeah, we got another. Yeah, yeah, well. yes, uh, another. You know, it's a podcast that uh, doesn't end. Whatever, just do like another uh, hour or whatever. Yeah, there's like another. Uh, was it like a space? Yeah, space grunts. Let me go into the discussions. And also, this sort of ties into what when I'm not sure what uh, episode or number, Woeful, you're going to have this our podcast on. Like, uh, basically, I was just talking about like uh, what things to do when you're programming and stuff and. Uh, what it takes for game development. I'm trying to figure out which. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of those. Uh, maybe it's on number two. Weird. Some. Nah, there's. My own things. I got no there idea. Was <laughs> one, there was one guy in the discussion who had no idea how like game development works. Maybe it was on. More turn. Nah, this was. Oh, nope. On screen. Nope. It was it was something that was just really that just had me just realize that this person has no idea what it takes for like a to make a game or anything. Right. Sounds like Fine. a guy I know from uh what was it? Uh Star Wars Galaxies Reborn. Uh this guy uh this it was a video of, a, of what was called like a transcript or something where of uh, basically a little recording that this guy had a um, little conversation with a couple of guys when she was Wait, with the channel kinda, on the forums. You kind of cut out for a second there. You kind of had cut out for a second. So just repeat what you said about five or three seconds ago. Uh, you were saying uh, something about um, uh, about a guy that didn't know anything no, about you were how no, game you development were works. Saying, yeah, what you were saying, because you had sort of cut out for a second. Yeah, it was reminding me a little bit of uh, what yeah. you were talking about. It was reminding me a bit about this uh, video I saw of uh, something that happened on uh, Star Wars Galaxies Reborn. Um, it was a um, new, uh, new generation engine uh, project. Um, for Star Wars Galaxies, and one of the developers for the project um, was talking to a couple of guys, and now this is like a emulator that um, has been like, that has been like shut down for like years, and like the project for the the you call it the original uh, one that, that you are like really uh, robotic. Hold up. It might be something well, going right. on. Am I coming in robotic or? Yeah, you were saying. Hopefully, how am I coming in at your end? It was probably it's robotic. Okay. Like, it was probably for me because I'm like going trying to look for these uh this discussion page. So probably had. Uh, yeah, that's probably it. Me, yeah. Sorry if I'm slow to respond. I'm trying to put a needle right now. <laughs> Don't stick it. Stick the needle up your nose. <laughs> I've done that. I've also sewn things to my legs before. The thought of that just had me the, the, the just had my just put my hand straight to my leg. <laughs> there was this one live stream that um you know Earl Man Fu was doing back when he was still Chocobones that I was sewing this one project and I ended up so white to my skirt because I was distracted by his gameplay instead of my sewing. Oh wow. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, his channel had, is still oh, yeah, I, remember, I remember now you had a soldier uh, report your uh, essay to your address. Yeah, I remember that. Not my essay? How could you sew yeah. an essay, Well, Didn't you say like, it was like an essay or something? Like, or your test? 
I remember you saying you. It was you say it was a skirt. Yeah, it's a skirt. I remember you saying you were on this essay. No, I remember you saying like you sewn something to it, like a like a report or something, like a piece of paper. No, it was my project, and I was also working on some reports for another class, but I had sewed the skirt to my jammer leg. It was more like a. Pajama, anyway. Well, at least you did sew it to, uh, to your actual skin. What did you do that? I've done that before. Oh, not fun. But uh, well, at least in the theater, it's more. good luck to have blood on a garment. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, so I think. Uh, yeah, this... of. I think the discussion I was looking for actually, uh, oh shit, I've been my fucking tongue again. Actually, got deleted off of the forums. But basically, um, it was just, first. First of all, Space Grunts is a two uh, D game, and it's you know, and first of all, it's it's developing uh, Java because I looked at the game files and they had like all the uh, Java programming uh, files associated to it. Like, okay, I could understand how this game was made because I understand Java. I like Java way more than C plus plus or any other programming languages so yeah i was looking at it, like oh this java base that went on this uh, discussion this guy like saying okay it was just asking you know some questions and i gave answers as well as the developer was giving answers which were you know quite logical and sensical but the guy just was not having it, it was really did not know the full process of how to make a game like one he was just saying like okay can the game not be capped at 30 and i was i uh, and for me, I was I was just explaining that, you know, in 2D games, it does not matter whether a game is in 30 frames per second or 60 frames. It has no difference at all. And also, Space Grounds is not locked at 30. It's at 60. And again, whether it's at 60 or 30 in a 2D game, it makes no difference at all. And then, uh, also, it's a turn-based game. Well, it's sort of like a... It's, it's a turn-based game, but it's like not like a take your turn and that's he's like you every move is a turn and then also the enemies move so it was actually like, oh how do i shoot but not move or whatever i was just saying oh how do i skip a turn and i just say okay you just shoot a weapon and it's simple you skip a turn and it's just he wasn't having that like which was really sensical i'm just like hey, this person never played like chess or any real sort of tactical game or understand something you know, with sacrifice or consequence. And then I was just explaining to him that, okay, it's not bad programming. I understand Java. And then they answered back, like, okay, we'll answer back saying, like, oh, this person uh, referring to the developer has, doesn't have the the uh, knowledge to make their own engine and use Java. I'm like, hold up. Java, if you, first of all, if you're making a game through Java, you are essentially making your own game engine you're not using anything like uh, unity or you are unreal engine which is a game engine of its own you're using like actual from scratch a uh, programming language to make your game uh engine and i'm just like okay this guy has no idea how game development goes and it's, for me because i know programming stuff like that kind of uh irritates me because much more like how it would irritate you know it like other game designers because you know they put all this time and effort into making a product and then people they don't know the process they don't appreciate they don't understand you know how the uh the uh, mechanics of it work although i would say sometimes certain games the mechanics aren't right but with this you know the mechanics seem you know doable sensible you know it's just, it's just sort of like irritating a bit on like a programming yeah. developer side and also as a game, they like, really just don't really appreciate the the thought process and the time it takes to actually code because it does take quite a bit to uh, program just software in general. Yeah, well, it's kind of like um, oh, what was it? You know, I think you probably the one you probably when when like one guy that um, was in charge of an NG um, Star Wars Galaxy project because like I remember watching this video when he was initially trying to um, he he was talking he was talking to, to a few guys that were 
part of the projects before, but they stepped down and gave him the project. And they had offered to help him a few times, but then, uh, but uh, the issue that he uh, that he was trying to go at was um, was, was about a channel on the forums that. Uh, that I guess um, only certain people were supp were supposed to um, be part of, but um, he had the guy and a lot of the people were like really butthurt about it, and you know, he, and, you know, he's attacking the, these guys about the channel, and th and they start telling him, well, hey, you know, you can attack us like this all you want, but hey, you know. You know, we gave you this. You know, we gave you this project and everything. This is now your project, and you know, you're not doing, you're not treating it uh, very well. And you know, trying to tell, and, you know, trying to tell him that the way he's coding and everything is wrong, and which I definitely agree because the guy, the way the guy was coding in the game was was bad because it's like what he would do. And uh, Zelly, you'd probably agree that this that this is a bad thing to do. Was he would come up with a new code, and then he would implement it into the live server without testing the code or anything for bugs or anything. Yeah, you never. And you never he and any time when, and any time when something would break in the game to crash it, he would implement code to have the game ignore that bug and continue on. Wow, and that's just, just further sort of... breaking it and such. That's just sort of, in a programming sense, ignorant. I had some more words to say, but you know, I'm just going to keep it simple. Yeah, and, and, yes, this, like, and this guy was selling, and, like game, and he was the selling these guys that stepped down. Game, uh, was the game, you have to buy it, or is it for free? Like, was it? It's an emulator. It's an emulated game oh, okay. um, off of, based off of Star Wars Galaxies. Oh, so they so they so emulators for like Star Wars Galaxies yeah. um pro uh, people that know how to program and such they have to kind of almost uh, recreate some coding to uh, to make it work but pretty much are trying to keep everything the way that um, Sony Entertainment had and such. Yeah, you never put like new code in a live version. You always go into a uh, well like. Be f like the final version, but not the live version. You go into there, and or or if you want to be really careful, just go into a previous build and then put the code in there. Then just, uh, work it out, see if it works, and then you'll go back into the yeah. Put you basically put it in a test server. Yeah, test server. Yeah, yeah. You never just put it straight up into the live feed. You know, that's without testing and also making a line of code that just strictly ignores the code, and that would just. I mean, for the most part, that could most likely uh, damage the computer, depending on what's uh, what the uh, what sort of memory is accessing to uh, play it, whatever on it, play whatever that's that's on it. Because there's a yeah. lot of ways to uh, like, there's a lot of ways to uh, to blue screen a computer just by uh, making you know, bad programming decisions. You know, like, oh yeah, I mean, this guy was doing is, a lot. Uh, yeah, you know, one easy way is just like. Making it, I forgot what it's called. I actually did this. I actually did this in like C plus plus or whatever. But it's like a way to um, yeah, because uh, computers you know you all got like memory and register. So like, it's like some code that would access the uh the memory, but you could make like a loop sequence where it would put stuff in the memory, but you could make it so where it would uh exceed the number of memory, and that would then you know when you when it runs the program. It would go fine until it actually exceeds the memory and it's called like a blue screen or a crash because, you know, this program is trying to access memory that doesn't exist at all on the machine. So that's sort of what you're dealing with. Yeah, and pretty much that was what was going on was everybody was trying to like do quests and everything, but like they couldn't. You know, but, but like at some points, you know, at a lot of points, um, people were not able to do almost anything in the game because the new coding that was being brought in to ignore all of these bugs and such and also was making it to where people couldn't do anything almost. And also like putting in new lines of code, that could also uh just completely take out uh old lines of code. So yeah, you really have to test everything out like especially if you're in like uh you're coding I'm not sure probably coding like a what 
C sharp or C plus plus. But anyway, if you go to like Java, you have to do everything in sequential order, or it just wouldn't uh, work properly. Like for the most part, I put everything in sequential order, but you could sort of like mix it up a bit. If it doesn't work, if it's mi when it's mixed up, then that's pretty sure it means you have to put it in uh, the right sequential order for it to run properly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and this guy, uh, he you know he he honestly did a lot of bad decisions with Cody and such, and it was funny because like he's telling these guys that um, they that you know gave him that st that stepped down um, that that did all this, this stuff before. He's telling these guys, you guys can't go. It's like. Asking somebody that knows how to, that doesn't know how to paint to help out with a painting, it's like, you know, yeah, you can, you know, maybe for somebody who doesn't know how to code, but for people that gave you the project and turning and and, and such, you know, they know how to code. They're just stepping down because they're tired of it, of trying to get things to work and such, Everybody or whatever like reasons they they step down. Yeah, if you were putting, like, new lines in, you would have to, like, completely read over what the previous lines are, like, get, like, a, some sort of a reference points. Which is why, like, for me, like, I, was, I know this is, like, sort of kind of bad programming on my part. Like, I don't actually put, like, comments or anything to say what this does. I sort of just, you know, just put the stuff in. I know that's so, like, industry standard sort of bad, but I, I, when I'm doing stuff on my own, I just sort of not tend to put in comments or what this does, which I really should. Because again, in industry standard, if you want to learn programming, it's best to put in comments of what this particular line does or what this section does. Because again, like, yeah, in, in the, and we were doing like a, a project with the tons of people, like if you send them a certain code and they don't know what it is, you don't have anything like comments or what this does, or if you don't have it within the code itself or like on a piece of paper, when someone tries to add in a new line of code or rework an old line, they have they have no idea what's happening because I mean, I'm pretty sure they'll know, but they don't know what exactly this does because some lines of code would do like a would do something different if it, even if it's the uh, the same line. But yeah, that's, uh, yep. So one uh, programming tip, you know, always. Try to make comments or or make it clear that what you're doing in this, especially if you're working on like a group project, and even if you're doing stuff on your own, because you know you may forget about what you did. But definitely always test out the coding before putting it on like the li the a live server or the next or like the final product or whatnot. Yes. You know what, why don't we might as well just do what, uh, did we, you know, well, Maggie, do you think that we actually fulfilled our, uh, podcast of talking about what to do and not do in gaming? Because I sort of feel like, even in the second one, I felt I like there was some... I think we got off tangent. Yeah, even in the second one, I felt like there was some stuff that we didn't, uh, go through. You think we got off what? Um, I was talking you know, about, you know, All on tangents. With the podcast that me and him did with Daisy, yeah, I felt like mm, that was sort of kind of got off track and such. <laughs> no, right, See, but that's know... the fun thing of a podcast. It's just like a conversation amongst friends. We can talk about anything under the sun. Yes, that's why Pretty I much. like. Uh, that's why I like starting a podcast without telling anyone because it's just in conversation. And also, there's uh, Joe Rogan podcast. He just he starts his podcast like that. So like, oh yeah, I want to do one that's. You know, in conversation of what we're talking about, instead of saying, "Oh, hey, welcome yeah. to the blah 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 podcast." Today's topic is this and this. Okay, topic number one. What do you think? But instead, it's sort of like, "No, we're in a uh, conversation," and then, uh, "Oh, hey, uh, we got this topic," and then you know, we say it. Sometimes we don't stay on topic. Sometimes we do, and sometimes like this, we keep the podcast going because. Eh, Let's just keep it going. <laughs> you know what this podcast makes me think of? What's that? This is the song that doesn't end, and it goes on and on. Oh, okay. <laughs> but this will 
definitely. I shouldn't sing much longer because, you know, copyright. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you gotta love the copyright stuff. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say, like, Crimson, do you know anything of programming or anything of the sort? Cause, uh... Do I know anything about programming? No, not really. Uh, I know, I know stuff. I know a lot of stuff about like uh, Microsoft Office and such. But as for programming, not quite yet. But I do have a couple of friends who uh, currently are programmers. Uh, one's actually working for a com- um, uh, one's working for a company. The other one's still in college for um, uh, for cl- for her classes and such. Because uh, I was gonna say, let's just go off on what. Well. Me and Wolfo was talking about on our podcast about, you know, what not to do in uh, Mega Games. So first of all, one, what I just said, always test out live code. We'll always test out a new line of code. And again, like um, what I said in their podcast, you would, for the most part, even no matter how much or no matter how long you've been programming, you would most definitely like get an error or forget something you will most likely forget like a syntax or anything because that's like present on uh everything because even for me when i uh program stuff like i would make everything completely perfect i would run the program and then like it would it would run perfectly fine but then i'll notice oh it's this this thing right here does not exactly do what it's supposed to do then i'll go back into the code and like okay it looks perfect but then i really look at it take a really good long look and like Oh, I forgot to put a period or a comma or semicolon. So yeah, you gotta really. Oh yeah. Gotta, <laughs> yeah, you have to really look at what you're doing, much like anything though. But this is a uh, more present. So yeah, I that, think uh, my main nitpick with you know new game developer developers when they have like really cliched stories or if they. Clearly, whip off someone. Yeah, it's not mean, really a coding thing; it's more of a aesthetic thing. I more really, of a copy and a copy and paste sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's another thing. Uh, well, depending on what you're writing, you can copy and paste code. But like, if you're starting a brand new game, if you want like just the. Uh, all right, what I do, like, uh, I sort of, if I make something, I sort of make, like, a template of it, so I don't have to actually retype everything, but I, but, so the, uh, the, like, I'll make a template of the main stuff, but what actually, like, makes it, uh, different, I'll delete all the other stuff and make, like, a template of where I want to make, and then I'll just go with that, so I would just say, like, basically, like, try not to copy and paste anything because yeah because i know there's some um games that are out there that have really well they just you know copy and pasted they didn't really advance anything into the uh the second sequel or in a uh a, a port or anything it's just you know straight up the same thing there's nothing different there's nothing new so there's nothing about the, the, a port for i mean after that but kind of Get my three like I was on Game Joe earlier this morning looking for games to do let's plays of because I want to do some newer games to get them exposure and I actually recorded six let's plays that I'm not going to upload because those games are just ugh I mean, that you bad just, you can just upload them for yes that. they hurt my brain they were so dumb and I feel so bad calling you know the games dumb but pretty much, it was just like rip-offs of, you know, popular games. Like, there was this one game that was ripping off Undertale. The other one was never, a rip-off of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, I've never God. played... I've never played Don't Undertale. Don't talk about I'm, Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm pretty sure I never would play Undertale. It just, it just doesn't look like Duh. too... Uh, Engaging. Don't don't even heart. remind me of financial phrase because so a friend of mine, uh, I'm not even gonna look it up, but it's on Steam. Some uh, some company decided to make a game slightly based off of Five Nights at Freddy's, but 
it was basically Five Nights at Freddy's, Final Fantasy. Oh, that, yeah, that, that's actually real. That wasn't the Care nope, Bears. Nope, but I gotta nope, I gotta uh wait what? You just say it's Care Bears? Hold up. They they made everything cute. And it, and the wait, colors and everything because, that they had everything. Wait, it, actually, made the, it made hold the it made the Calm down, calm down. Get, get a get a get a uh, paper bag and breathe it. Get, get a paper bag. Get a paper bag and breathe it. Because there actually is a uh, a legitimate Five Nights at Freddy's of uh, Final Fantasy like type game that was made by like, the uh, uh, I forgot his name was it. It's Scott, Why did Scott do that? It's Scott something. It, it that, there actually is. Go up to Houston. Yeah, there actually is like a, a legitimate. Five Nights at Freddy's of Final Fantasy type game made by the creator. So when you said Care Bears, like, are you actually talking about the same thing or is it something like the, different? Yeah, it yeah. actually is a It's like the one. colors that they're using or something makes me think of Care Bears or something. Yeah, because because of how colorful and cute that, that all the characters are supposed to be. Because if you're talking about that, then that's uh, like, like they actually that wasn't made. Any, it that, actually no, made uh, Bonnie and was it Five Nights at Freddy's? It was something because like that's what you're describing. That's like a real game. I almost wonder if we're made. talking about the same game now. Yeah, because that was a real game made by the actual creator. So there's no different company. Because I'm trying to figure out what it was called. Because uh, let me just click on the stuff. Because yeah, that because uh, after when four came out. The create the developer. He announced that but he was going to make Scott a. Why does Scott do that? He makes no, he already, yeah, a thing he, with the creeping. No, he he oh. he already uh like decided once when the four came out that uh he was gonna he was gonna do that. So I think we I think you're talking mm-hmm. about the same. I think me and you were talking about the same game, but you just uh sort of taking it a little bit too far. Like you're not uh let me try and if my internet okay it is five nice at freddy's it's like a limit that yeah, wasn't called because it's something yes T- today on the side quest podcast me and crimson are both talking about the same game but he does not know it uh so it's like freddy's Something it was like no Five Nights at Freddy's. No, it was. I'm just going like the brand new releases because that's uh that's what it was. I think top sellers was it top sellers? I have no idea. I know when it came out, it was a uh, top seller on Steam, but I'm not talking sure. Yeah, I think, I think me and you were both talking about Here we go. Same oh, I found it. It's a, uh, at least I... Oh, what? Yeah, I think me and you were both talking about the same thing. Yeah, you just uh, taking it. Okay, out. not sure. Oh, I found the game, at least. It's... Uh, it, 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 it's called Five Nights at Freddy's World. Yeah, and, that's... Uh, that's, here we go. Yeah, you are... You are taking it a little bit uh, too much because that 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 is made by the same uh, developer, the same guy. Yeah, he yeah he wanted to make the game like yeah that because maybe because uh, number the fourth one was definitely his last one, and the world was gonna be you know the I guess the final one because I remember there was like I remember I when like the, in the community there was like speculating that it was gonna be a uh, uh, Freddy's movie. Or something like that. Uh, yeah, like Freddy's uh, World Five has, Nights at Freddy's movie. Yeah, I think the community was want to have like a a community or something like that. Freddy's World. Uh, it's wait. Is it Five Nights at Freddy's World or is it just called Freddy's World? It's called F N A F World. Which um, I just uh, looked at looked it up on Google, and apparently um, it was removed from Steam. Okay, yeah, because not I too don't long see ago. It. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. 
that's yeah, because I'm pulling it, pulling it up, and they actually have because uh, it actually did look kind of good. I actually, it actually looked kind of good. It plays, it seemed like it played well, and it's, like the background wasn't all too uh, amazing. The graphics looked okay. I'm pretty sure the turn-based style was all right. And well, well yeah, they well, got a. Uh, Well, according to this, it's like they say that they uh, that there's apparently uh, like five reasons why Scott Calton um, had removed it from Steam. One, they're saying that uh, he, um, Scott announced that um, apparently uh, they're going to be putting like more um, more features and a deeper experience. Another one was like fear of bugs. And apparently, this uh, that when it returns to Steam, um, apparently it's going to be completely free. Okay. Which what about the people who already bought it, though? They, no they, clue. They, they, um, they look they at that right now. It. Don't they? Don't they still got it? Even though this is taken off. I mean, it's taken off the Steam store, but not taken off of their computer. So they still got it. So it doesn't really matter. It's not like kind of gypped if I paid for something and people didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I would probably feel like I, I was robbed or something. I, I Here's the... Um, I care. I just posted in the chat of the uh, article. So if y'all want to take a look at it, you can. Why are their eyes so big? Because it's anime-like. That's why. Yeah, that's what he wanted to be. He wanted it to be sort of like anime-like, but still in that Five Nights at Freddy world creepiness to it. Yeah, that's okay, like. Could you imagine Five Nights at Freddy's as an actual anime? That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, the game looked. Uh, it seems off. I guess the yeah. big question would be like, how would that work? Like, 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 would there be like a like? Would there still be like a security guard, or would it be like kids run uh, walking into this? They, uh, there's Five Nights at Fred, there's like uh, Freddy's Fun, whatever it's, whatever the thing is called. Yeah, it's basically Chuck E. Cheese, you know. What, what, whatever the, the, whatever the, the, the restaurant was in the first Five Nights at Freddy's. It's Chuck yeah. It's, it's basically Chuck E. Uh, Cheese. Oh, the Chuck, uh, Chuck E. Cheese place. Yeah. I mean, uh, with a bear, with, with a bear, a little, um, uh, ch- uh, a, a, a baby chick and a, and a bunny and a pirate fox. I mean, uh, let's remove fully 3D overall. Finding is the, the, the more I'm th- the, the more I think about it, the more I'm th- the more I'm wondering that it probably would be a good uh, anime if that was that would work. I mean, it's already like. Watch it. Yeah, there's already like tons of uh, horror based anime out there. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it would like definitely work. I mean, it already has like a a good uh, what I'm trying to say mm, a community yeah, community base to it. So I'm pretty sure the anime for it would go well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, so me and you were definitely talking about the same It depends because, on, I guess, like, who, uh, like, so who animates it, because each anime, because each company has its own style. What I would want to see, like, uh, Lurch, or maybe... Yeah, because uh, uh, I don't know, the the way the, the, the way the color, it, you know, colorful it was. Are the same uh, company huh? that, are the same production that did uh, uh, Attack on Titan. Oh yeah, either Lurch or the same company that did Attack on Titan, which also did uh, uh, Seraph of the End, which is why Seraph of the End sort of looks like Attack on Titan a bit. I forgot the company for it, but yeah, like those two, they'll be pretty good uh, companies to if if a anime was to be made for this, the animation would be uh, pretty good. Is he cutting out for anybody else? <laughs> cutting out for me too. I think okay. in a little bit I'm gonna leave so I can eat. Uh, I probably. Yeah, uh, probably. 
on the uh, website. Oh, so everybody gonna leave? Okay, well, we can like, uh, end the podcast for real now. <laughs> but yeah, this is it for like, the podcast. I have Brian ate before, but I didn't. What? I haven't had dinner yet. Yeah. yeah, I have. I've had lunch. I haven't had dinner yet. I woke up too early, so I am gonna. Yeah, sorry. Since everybody's gonna be a little bit uh, peckish, I'm gonna end the podcast for here. This was a pretty good one. Went like I think thirty minutes over what I wanted to end at. I mean, it kind of ended like when I went to, when I sort of. But the usual podcast is about two hours or. A little bit over two hours. Yeah, if that's it for the podcast for today, I will put a link in the description for Wolfles channel, Crimson channel, and also uh uh yeah, like pretty sure it's a link for my own channel. But yeah, that's it for the podcast <laughs> for today. If you uh, like it and you want to see more, just subscribe to see more in the future. Until then, see you later. Bye bye. And. There, airplane, once again.